Kirk, by the way, it is really rock hard down there and uh, kind of thin, but it should be a very fast surface for both. You know, John Tenuta is leaving Georgia Tech after this game. It wasn't necessarily his choice. Paul Johnson taking over, and for more on that, we go to Heather Cox. Right, Dave. In fact, playing for an interim head coach in a bowl game is nothing new. In fact, five teams have endured that turnover this bowl season. But what makes today unique is that incoming Georgia Tech coach Paul Johnson is in attendance today, but in no official capacity. We do know John Tenuta is out. He interviewed for the head spot, lost it to Johnson, and Johnson has already hired his own defensive coordinator. So the question becomes, where will John John to Nuda Land. He's considered a hot commodity and is believed to be a leading candidate for coordinator vacancies at both LSU and Michigan, and an announcement seems imminent. In the meantime, the question becomes what kind of distraction, if any, will Paul Johnson's presence pose to the tech underclassmen? Will they feel they're auditioning for a new head coach today, and how will it affect their performance, guys? Well, that's a great question, Heather. What do you think, James? I mean, uh, Paul Johnson just got in last night. He's hanging around today. In fact, he'll be with us in the third quarter, right. taking a look at his team. It is a very odd situation well you know what you can use the analogy when Bill Parcells went down to Miami and how those professional athletes felt a little nervous and a little giddy about Bill Parcells being in the house and so you got to think those some of those guys are a little concerned when it comes to Georgia Tech about Paul Johnson's presence here. and there is John Tenuta well somebody's going to wind up with a defensive coordinator with a heck of a defense and Pat Hill really the face of the Fresno State football program He'll be starting his 12th season next year, fifth, and make that eighth bowl appearance. His record outstanding in the Valley. And, you know, he has done it with a lot of guys from that area. He's very loyal to the Valley area. Gets a few players from Nevada, but has really developed a reputation for this program. Guys like Bear Pasco, for example, that face, that attitude amplifies what Fresno State football is. Well, when you talk about passion and tradition, you know, he went back last year after that 4-8 and eight season and said, listen, we're going to reevaluate what we're doing here and under explain to these guys what Bulldog football is all about. And I think that's a, a, this is a culmination of that meeting that they had last year at the end of the year. And it's evolved into this and for Fresno State this is a big opportunity they don't get outside the whack that much they try to they schedule very aggressively but they love getting a shot at the BCS conference team they've won 11 of those games very important ones for them and they've lost a few more than they've won but a lot of them have been close and they're one of those schools that you don't really want to schedule I think <laughs> if you're a BCS school and we and I, I tried to my darnest yesterday to ask coach Hill if he might change his philosophy about playing anybody any place anytime <laughs> and he did. would not he would not <laughs> budge on it and you know my hats off to him because he understands that you know what this is how he gets to, how he wants to turn his program around and get this thing going in the right direction is playing top caliber players and teams and my hats off to him Georgia Tech will receive the kickoff and we are underway on the Smurf turf Georgia Tech known better for their special teams defense as Jamal Evans carries the opening kickoff for a few yards let's meet the Georgia Tech offense and Taylor Bennett, not one of the highest rated passers in the ACC, number 10 overall, the junior from St. Louis, Missouri, had nine interceptions and just six touchdown passes and completed a little bit less than 50%. Yeah, and he injured his hand this year. You know, uh, in fact, he injured his hand in the last game against Georgia. Uh, so I'm sure they're happy to have him back underneath the center. But uh, uh, I think it's going to be important for him to have some success in order for Tashar Ch Choice to have success as well. They start out throwing the football. We talked at the top of the show about running, and they go right to James Johnson, the junior from Florida. His 22nd catch, Damon Jenkins on the top, and that looks to be right around the first down mark. And uh, by the way, it would be a good idea against a team that is known for hitting people. You might want to stick that mouth guard away from the uh, top here. What do you think? No, a little pregame jitters, I'm sure. But uh, you know what? Coach Tenuta has talked all week about speeding up the tempo of, of practice as well as plays for offense. And I think you're seeing it, a, a, an example of guys hustling up to the line and maybe maybe Ben is a little little so anxious that he's forgetting his mouthpiece right now. Well, they're in a two-minute offense, which is a little bit of a surprise. John Vaughn, the offensive coordinator, dialing up the first handoff to Sichard Choice, but Cornell Banks, a redshirt freshman from Fresno, knocked that for a loss of three, and that'll bring up third down for Georgia Tech. So now they go back to the huddle. They had the two-minute thing working there for a little bit, and they decided to pull back the claws and huddle up. Well, Keep your eye on number 40, Mike Cox. He's, there, uh, he's the bull, as they call him. And he is in there as they go the other way. A little bootleg action with Bennett, and he will get the first down. So let's meet this offense, and certainly we go to one of the finest kickers in the country. 
for Georgia Tech. Travis Bell has never missed a point after touchdown, 134 in a row, and it's brought to us by Samsung Mobile. Travis? Starting to understand that we got Mr. Taylor Bennett, my main squeeze, a.k.a. the great white hype. Behind him, we got the Deuster, Tashar Choice, ACC leading rusher for the past two years. Up front, anchoring one of the best offensive lines in the nation, starter Kevin Tuminello, the Italian Stallion. And next to him, we got senior starter Matt Rose of Pride of Texas. Back to you, Dave. Hi, Travis. Thank you very much. And there you get a good looking choice bursting in to the Fresno State secondary, getting all the way to the 44 yard line, his second carry. And there you get a very good idea. Tyler Klutz among the tacklers there for the Bulldogs. Whenever you're playing against a good running back, the backside. Per, uh, protection on a defense is important. If you lose leverage on Deshard Choice, he's going to make you pay. And here's a prime example of whoever has backside responsibility on the play on the run fake must stay home. And in that particular instance, no one was there. Sharp makes you pay. So again, the out pattern looks very similar to the play that they ran earlier, and it's completed. Samarius Thomas, a member of the All ACC Freshman Team, and Damon Jenkins again in there on the stop. This Thomas is 32nd catch. And you know, one thing I think that's been missing for Tech is, I mean, you lose Calvin Johnson, you're losing an unbelievable player. No sure. receiver has really stepped out to take that spot. Right, and it's it's hard to replace a guy like Calvin Johnson. It's, it's just not going to happen overnight. But I think Tashar Choice is the key here in this ball game. In order for the passing game to succeed, you're going to have to run the football with Tashar. Trying to get it to Thomas in the end zone. Flag is down. It's caught for the touchdown. Let's make sure this one's going to stand up. So Taylor Bennett, we expected a lot more running out of Georgia Tech early on. They go with a deep pass for 35 yards. We'll see if it stands. A lot of hand fighting on this play. Pass interference. Number 22 on the defense. Penalties declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. That is our referee from the Big East, Randy Smith, with that call. So Georgia Tech will bring out Travis Bell for maybe 135 in a row. You know, we talk about getting your hips turned as a defensive back. You don't want to get your hips turned too early. And here you see Damon Jenkins get his hips open early, and he loses leverage on the court on the on the receiver. Travis Bell, the senior from Rosewell, Georgia. And he's made 135 in a row, and Georgia Tech off to a fast start behind Taylor Bennett's seventh touchdown pass of the year and the fourth to Demarius Thomas. Now we'll see what Fresno State can do when we return. Bobby said, like, why don't you take Samantha? But then Susie was all like, no, you can't do that because, Dad, this is really old mutual. Bridge or tunnel? Oh, bridge, please. It's much more old mutual this time of day. I want you to focus on one thing and one thing only. Protect the old mutual. You got that? May sound strange now, but with our new thinking about your financial future, it won't for long. It's completely old mutual. If you say so. Introducing the Samsung Juke. Hey! Samsung, leading the music phone revolution. There are no free rides on the road to victory. what it takes to pay the toll? Gatorade. Is it in you? The Rose Bowl game presented by City, Illinois versus USC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. So Taylor Bennett goes three out of three for 53 yards and a touchdown to Thomas on that drive, and Georgia Tech has now scored on their opening drive six times this season. 
And this is a part of the game where Fresno State is missing a key player. A.J. Jefferson was one of eight players sent home by Pat Hill for a curfew violation. Now, Jefferson may not have been able to play anyway because of a bad ankle, but he was averaging almost 36 yards per return. This is Marlon Moore, who has not returned a kickoff all season and not doing too badly. He'll get it out to around the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. Well, you know, let's talk about Dave. Let's talk a little bit about the press technique, press bail technique that Damon Jenkins is playing here. He opens his hips, which is fine, but you don't want to allow the receiver, Demarius Thomas, to get on your backside because you lose vision of the receiver. Once he gets on your backside, you have no clue where the receiver is, and now the receiver has advantage. Great job by Thomas, Demarius Thomas, of getting on Jenkins' backside. Him losing leverage on the football was was a key play there, the key in, a key situation there. So I take a look at Tom Brandstater. The junior from Turlock, California. Only threw five interceptions against 14 touchdowns, and this play is a bust. False start. 72 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. So let's uh, take another look at Tom Brandstater. You had a chance to see him against Kansas State. What yeah. did you think? Oh, he played He played fantastic. He's played big in big ball games. He's played great against Texas A&M. He's played great against Oregon. He played great against Hawaii. The problem with Tom Brandstater is he hasn't found a true go-to receiver just yet. And I think they found one uh, in the last game or two in Kansas State's game against, uh, against Kansas State when Marlon Moore stepped up and made some huge plays. Also keep an eye out for uh, Jira Tutu, number six, but not at all surprisingly, Fresno State makes a lot of their living on the ground. It's Lanier Miller, the sophomore from Fontana, California. Now, another key player missing for Fresno State, not because of suspension, but because of injury, is the amazing freshman tailback, Ryan Matthews, who, this sounds so painful to even to mention, tore a muscle off his collarbone and will not be here. Yeah, they're going to really miss him. You know, he rushed for 866 yards this year and had 14 touchdowns. Outstanding freshman running back. Uh, they're going to try to run the football by committee with Clifton Smith and Lanier Miller. Pressure from the backside. Brandstad is showing a strong arm. Just overthrew everybody, but there you get a good idea of what that Georgia Tech defense likes to do. Well, brought to you by Samsung Mobile. Let's meet the Fresno State offense. And you know what? Clint Stitzer will introduce the kicker, the winner of the 2007 Dean's Medal Award among Fresno State athletes. Running the whole show at quarterback, we got Tommy, the above average golfer, Brandstater. Hauling in those passes, we got tight end, Bear, the man, the myth, the legend, Pasco. Protecting Tommy's backside at left tackle, we got Bob Zilla cooking up pancakes on a daily basis. He leads the team in knockout blocks. And then at center, we got Ryan. I like to get in a fight every day at practice, Wendell. Back to you, Dave. <laughs> okay, Glenn, thank you very much. I don't know if Ryan knew he was introduced that way, but probably doesn't like it. At that time, uh, Bulldogs did a great job on the blitz, but the pass is defended to the 37-yard line in great fashion by Morgan Burnett. All ACC freshman player and somebody who shot his way into the starting lineup at the end of the season. Yeah, when we covered him down uh, down in Georgia against uh, Clemson, he wasn't starting at the time. But here's a fantastic job of going up, attacking the football, and knowing that if he can't intercept the ball, no one will, and he does a good job of knocking it away. Trying to get it to Darren Newborn. The ironic thing is Fresno State, the least penalized team in the WAC, never really recovered from that false start penalty that set it back on their first attempt. We get a look at Kyle Zimmerman, the senior punter from Vizalia, California. go it's going to go in reverse that is exactly what Fresno State doesn't need that was about seven yards picked up the other way so a bad break for the Bulldogs an excellent field position for Georgia Tech that punt is only 25 yards so let's revisit their first possession. They started out with a little bit of a two-minute drill here, James, and they may have caught the Bulldogs off guard. Well, you know, you talk about what the value is that John Tenuta brings to this team. It's, he understands how a hurry-up offense can damage a defense. It doesn't allow you to substitute. It doesn't allow you to get your calls in, and it allows you to be a, a, a little bit out of your norm when it comes to getting your defensive play calls in. So I like the idea, and I think that right, right now it's an advent, advantageous for Georgia Tech. And back to pass again. Flushed out, though, this time the left-hander. And he'll accept that incompletion gratefully, I think, as 
Cornell Banks, who's already gotten off to a fast start for the Bulldogs, putting the pressure on Taylor Bennett. Now, one guy we're going to see a little bit later on is Josh Nesbitt, and Taylor Bennett realizes this might be the last game he starts for Georgia Tech with a new coach coming in. It, it very well may be. You know, listen, when you bring in a new op triple option op style offense, you know, not a lot of guys can run that type of offense. It's going to take a special guy to run that offense, and nothing against Taylor Bennett, but I think Paul Johnson is going to be looking for a little bit something different, and I think Josh Nesbitt might be the guy. That's been a little bit of a better running quarterback. And of course, Paul Johnson, if you're not aware of his style of offense, is a triple option that worked so successfully in Navy. Choice, the senior. And he picked up about four on there. Let's take a look at the Fresno State defense. For that, we turn to the all whack performer, the linebacker, Marcus Riley. Anchoring down the D line, we have Tyler Klutz, one of Fresno State's greatest with 22 career sacks. Beside me, we have Ben Jacobs, Baby Jesus, we like to call him. And on the other side, Trevor, I'm really from Connecticut, Shamley. Anchoring down the defensive backfield, we have Danny Jenkins, my frat brother of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated from the great De La Salle High School. Fresno State bench trying to tell everybody that that pass to DJ Donnelly was incomplete. Regardless, it's short of the marker. It is ruled complete to the 48-yard line, but Georgia Tech left the punt. We're going to get our first look at the winner of the Ray Guy Award. First team All-ACC punter, Durant Brooks. Well, when you talk about field position, this guy makes all the difference in the world in this ballgame. I can guarantee you that much because of his, what he can do with, the, with punting the football. Field position would be a big part of this game, and Durant Brooks would play a big part in it. Very, very little wind on the field, by the way. Not really a factor. Fresno brings the heat. They're so good at blocking kicks, but this is a monster high kick. Clifton Smith, known as Batman, makes the fair catch, but there is a flag down right around midfield. I'll tell you what, though, Fresno State is so good. 75 blocked kicks since Pat Hill arrived in 1997. Now, they have not blocked a punt this year, James, but 35 of those 75 blocked have been punts. Well, There's no penalty on the play at legal formation. So Fresno State gets the ball a second time. See if they can solve that Georgia Tech defense when we return it to Boise. Hurry up, kids! Going nowhere with expired credit card miles? Whew. Get Capital One's No Hassle Rewards with no miles expiration, no earned caps, and no blackout dates. They should switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? My name is Vern Troyer. I live in Hollywood, California, and I'm a mage. A master of the arcane. There are nine million players in the world of Warcraft. It's huge, like my mage. <laughs> I'm Vern Troyer, and I'm a mage. What's your game? World of Warcraft, the number one online game. Try it for free at warcraft.com. My 99 Lincolns, you've been overlooked. You think you're worthless, but to me, you are a hot, juicy stack attack. Introducing the new stack attack, made from fresh, never frozen beef. You won't find a better double cheeseburger for only 99 cents, only at Wendy's. If you want to quit smoking, think mint. Commit mint lozenges. Commit tastes great, works fast, and calms cravings even after the lozenge is gone. Humanitarian Bowl is brought to you by Brody's Truck Stops. I'm Reese Davis with you in our college football studios. This breaking from the NFL just a little while ago, Baltimore Ravens have fired Brian Billick. This coming just after insistences that Billick was safe and would return next year. Last season, the Ravens won 13. This season, they won five and lost to the Dolphins. Thus, the change for Baltimore. We'll have more on that coming up at halftime. Here's your score in time. Second possession for the Bulldogs. They went three and out on their first one. 
And saw a little bit of pressure on Tom Bradstater, but obviously one of the things Pat Hill wants to do, because this is the way he plays, no matter who he plays in, is he wants to establish that straight-ahead running game. And he's going to do it with that offensive line that he has up front, led by Ryan Wendell. They're going to actually come up. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be a second false start penalty on the Bulldogs, who, by the way, are not in strange false territory start. here. 72 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So it shouldn't be an issue of not feeling comfortable in Boise. They are here every other year, and they have played in this stadium many times. Well, they've also seen the film, as we've seen the film. So <laughs> they understand the kind of defense that they're faced against. and they, understand, they also understand how important it is to get off the football and be the first to initiate contact. And so that's what you're trying to you're, you're seeing established right now with the Fresno State offensive line versus the Georgia Tech defensive line. Open. And that is Bear Pasco, the outstanding tight end. He gets well more than the penalty yards all the way out to the 23 yard line where he is finally dragged down samsung mobile presents the starting lineups for the defense of georgia tech and the punter durant brooks anchor one of the best defense in the nation aka the goon squad we had Dare robertson and vance walker two reasons why tech leads the nation in sacks and tackles for a loss Leading the linebacker core, we have Mr. Seek and Destroy, Philip Wheeler, the Predator, and Gary Guyton, the Terrorizer of the Blitz. And finally, we have the secondary, led by Jamal Lewis and freshman All-American, Morgan Burnett. Let him up, D. And well, they did there as it's a first down. Lanye Miller gets the first first down of the game for the Bulldogs. What did Dennis Green say uh, after the Bears game when he was a coach for the Cardinals? He said, the Bears are who we thought they are, were. Yeah, that's right. Well, we know Pat Hill is who he, we thought he is, right? He's going to come out and he's going to run the football. He's not going to change up anything. You're going to have to come up and, and make good, solid tackles, and you're going to have to block well in order to beat Pat Hill's football teams. But Georgia Tech comes in with the 12th-ranked run defense in the country, barely over 100 yards, the 11th-ranked defense overall in the nation, 310 yards allowed per game. And a quick hitter this time with Anthony Harding get some playing time at that tailback position. Again, with Ryan Matthews out, we'll see Miller. We'll see some Clifton Smith. We'll yep. see Anthony Harding. Might even see Kyle Duffy get into the game today, too, for the Bulldogs. Anthony Harding has been over 100 yards against New Mexico State, so that the last game of the regular season. So they've got some proven running backs in the backfield that know how to run the football. The 11th straight bowl game for Georgia Tech, one of only six schools to do that. Taking a deep shot. And caught. Is it in bounds? Yes. Tremendous catch by Marlon Moore. Probably the hottest of the Fresno receivers coming into the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. Yeah, we, we talked about Marlon Moore at Moore the very beginning of the show here and talked about his vertical speed and he, how he used it down, downfield. And here you see a pump fake on the cornerback by Brian Stater setting up Morgan Burnett. Great throw outside shoulder where you want to place it for Marlon Moore. Marlon Moore understands, looks, I have to get inside the numbers so I can give my quarterback a chance to throw it outside my shoulder and then allow me to be in, in, in balance. Great throw and great route running. And here's a direct snap to Clifton Smith, the senior from Fresno. This is not an uncommon sight for the Bulldogs, even though they're not normally a team that relies on deception. They do like to put in the Speedy Smith. Only 5'8", 190, but very, very fast. Yeah, very fast. You know, he tore his ACL in, in 2005. He he's all, actually came back this year and was voted the team's MVP. Great job by Clifton Smith. You know, we talked to, to Philip Wheeler for Georgia Tech and asked him, you know, what guy gives you guys the most problems? And he said, this guy, Clifton Smith, he does so many things out the backfield. He's the guy that causes the most problems for us. And here you see a direct snap. You know, just, he just does so many things for Fresno State. Well, that time he didn't get a lot of yards. Daryl Richard, who lists as an ambition as perhaps being an athletic director one day, at the moment just sat on that play. The junior from Louisiana uh, brings up third down and seven. Well, we talked to Shar Choice in the, in the pregame interview and said, what guy is going to be that vocal leader for your team next year? And he said, Daryl Richard is the guy I think can step up and be that leader next year for us. Whoever that is is going to have to do a lot of talking, though, to replace what Deshard Choice Well, was. you know, I tell you, you know, people talk about guys being vocal guys and all interpreting and all that, but there's a big responsibility that comes with it when you do all that talking, and uh, Deshard Choice backs it up. Fresno's 0 for 1 on third down. 
That make it one out of two. Go to Bear Pasco. He, look, if you're going to cover somebody, I might consider that's a guy I'm going to pay a lot of attention to. Two guys, Marlon Moore and Bear Pasco. Here's Brand Sitter. Does a good job looking off the looking off the defense. Great route running job there by Bear Pasco. Sitting down, getting his shoulders down, not giving the, the corner a chance to react by raising up his shoulders. Stays down, pumps his arms, breaks out the route. Excellent throwing catch. 33 touchdowns and 39 red zone scoring appearances out of 48 for the Bulldogs this season. And straight ahead, but boy, that play went quickly with Clifton Smith. Well, some of you may have noticed the big V on the back of the Fresno State helmets. For more on that, we go to the field and Heather Cox. Well, that large green V is to recognize the San Joaquin Valley, simply known in California as the Valley, which claims over 50% of the Bulldog roster. It's the largest produce-producing region in the world and is the geographic size of Tennessee. Coach Hill started the tradition about nine years ago to establish a sense of pride in the region, and this season it's been easy for the Valley to jump on that Bulldog bandwagon, guys. Yeah, one thing that Pat Hill is all about is the pride in that area and in that program. He'll try again with Smith, trying to get to the edge, and he does, and he has a first down. But he is, is really, really quick. He's very explosive. Coach Pat Hill said he's the heart and soul of our team. You know, he doesn't have the outstanding numbers that jump off the chart at you, but the guy can do it all, and that's the key in this ball game is a guy that can be versatile, catch the ball, direct snaps. I mean, what, what more can you ask? That's where we are, and that's who we are. I'm Dave. He's James. Heather Cox is on the field here. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Smith, 15 yards and four rushes so far, and Brandstater has thrown for 60 on this drive. Fresno's first drive unsuccessful, but their second one is... You see it for yourself. That's Harding back in a tailback, and here the pads popping that time as the middle of that Tech defense. Looked like Guyton was in there. Vance Walker also 99 getting up off the ground after a, a short gain for Harding. Now, the key for Brandstater is, is going to be to change up the cadence at the line of scrimmage. If he continues to go on the first sound, it give the defense a huge advantage of getting off the football, you're going to have to change up the snap count on a continuous basis in order to throw this defense off soon. You know, Vance Walker, a first-team All-ACC performer, a junior. He's coming back from Fort Mill, South Carolina. Eight and a half sacks this year also. For the nation's leading sack defense, they don't have any yet. Again on the ground, again it's Smith, and he is drilled at the four. Picked up maybe to the three-yard line. Jamal Lewis came up from his safety position. You see Robertson's in your photograph also. And a, again, the Georgia Tech defense stiffening inside the five-yard line. When you have two offensive, uh, two, uh, offensive line and a defensive line that are equally matched as, as these two groups are, you're going to need to change up the snap count because I can tell you right now, this is going to be a stalemate every time you snap the ball because both teams understand what the ball's on one. Brand Center needs to come up, change the snap count up, and give his team a, a huge advantage right away. Now, interesting call here for Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator, first year with the Bulldogs. See what he comes up with. Flip ahead to Smith and the speed of the Tech defense closed it out. You saw Robertson get in there and wrestle Smith to the ground. And Pat Hill has decided that's enough of that. I think I'll try to get my easy three points here with my fine kicker. Well, Robertson is, is a second team all ACC player. He runs from sideline to sideline, which is what you can't ask for more than that from a defensive lineman. We talked to Coach, we talked to Coach Tenuto about Rob Roberson, and he said, listen, this guy would be a perfect fit in a 3-4 style defense. He wouldn't put his hand down. He'd be a linebacker. I think he'd have, have, have the right future. Sensor, 14 out of 22 on the year. Probably one of the easier ones he's been asked to convert. And he pops home the three-pointer. So Fresno State got inside the five-yard line, but it didn't quite work out for them for six. Instead, they get half of that. And Georgia Tech will get the football back, and we'll see what their offense can do against the Bulldogs defense in Boise when we return. Feeling that big cold all over your body? Yeah. 
Immerse yourself in total cold relief with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Liquid medicine that speeds relief to every inch of you. For big relief, fast. Alka-Seltzer Plus liquidates your big cold all over. Also available in liquid gel and liquid. And now break free from chest congestion and coughing with new Alka-Seltzer Plus mucus and congestion. Final time as they battle Heisman winner Tim Tebow in Florida. New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. LG Electronics allows you to enjoy the latest sports event or blockbuster in the luxury of your own customized home theater designed by Jerry's Audio Video. Call and schedule a personalized walkthrough today with one of Jerry's professional home entertainment specialists. You'll find out what really makes sense for you in your budget. Complete home theater systems from LG Electronics with surround sound starting at just $3,500 with monthly payments as low as $99. Life's good with LG Electronics and Jerry's Audio Video, a trusted name for over 35 years. Call for your home walkthrough today. For years, we've said driving under the influence is dangerous, deadly, and just plain dumb. But a picture is worth a thousand words. Get convicted of DUI and you'll face something else. Your name, photo, and conviction on our website. They didn't follow the law, and now you can follow them. See our DUI photo album. Visit StopDUIAZ.com. A long way from Atlanta for the Georgia Tech cheerleaders, but they don't seem to mind the cold. It's a little cold in Atlanta, too, by the way. We were talking to people about that. They reminded us quickly that this is not exactly outrageously, viciously cold weather. The temperature will be about in the middle 20s. There would have been some snow earlier in the week, but dry ground here in Boise as we get ready for Fresno State's kickoff. Nice hands there at the 20-yard line. That is Jonathan Dwyer, who could be the running back of the future for Georgia Tech. No, that was Jamal Evans, number 20, pardon me, making a very nice catch. So we thought we might see Josh Nesbitt in this quarter, but that's going to be Taylor Bennett. And right now for Georgia Tech, why not? He had yeah. a very good passing hand. And, no, yeah, it is Josh Nesbitt. Nesbitt, so Bennett, four out of five, 56 yards in the touchdown. We are going to see Nesbitt in this series, as we have been promised. And I realize those aren't outrageous passing numbers, but it's the rushing yards that seem to be attracting the attention. Well, I, I'll go back to what you were saying before he came out, which is... Why bring Taylor Bennett out? I mean, the idea is to win the ball game. But what you may be looking at here is the future of Georgia Tech's offense. And for more on Josh Nesbitt and that offense, let's go down to Heather. Well, guys, offensive coordinator John Bond told us they probably haven't played Josh Nesbitt enough this season. He said it's, quote, scary to give a true freshman the keys to the car. But if he plays well, guys, Coach Bond may very, very well give him the pink slip to the car and give him more time throughout this game. Nesbitt's strength is his strength. The Tech offense will run a lot more guns, more misdirection, more spread to utilize that athleticism. And they run the QB draw, and for a first down, and plenty more. That tackle right there may have saved a touchdown. That was a game-saving tackle. No, there's no question about it. Marvin Haynes doing that. There was a great block down the field that had Nesbitt been able to get by Haynes. It is a touchdown. Now, the, the interesting part about this whole deal to me is how Fresno State doesn't understand who Josh Nesbitt is because the guy <laughs> has done nothing but run the football all year. So I'd be, right now, as soon as he comes in the game, I'm thinking run all day long. Let's load up the box, eight men in the box, and let's not allow him to run the football. He only threw 11 passes, completed just four of them during the season. And they were waiting for him a little bit this time, and he took a shot. Well, and see, here's the problem. Fresno State's in man-to-man. -man. They need to come out and get into a zone, allow themselves to insert another defender down into the box, and take and take away Josh Ness. But he's, he's ran the ball every time he's, every, every time he's been in the game. Yeah, you see Klutz, Roberts, and also Quadir Brown got in there. Nesbitt, however, has already rushed for 20 yards on three carries. And picked up a couple on that one. Now, when we talked to Dan Brown, the defensive coordinator, yesterday, he said they play man-to-man 90% -man of the time, which is why their interception uh, numbers are so low for the last two years. Uh, but here's the case right now. you got to get in the zone, take away the run. 
Benjamin's first pass, and again, they go to the right side. That's Thomas again. Now, every pass so far, but I should say every pass, but most of their successful passes have been to that side of the field. Bennett, of course, being left-handed, did throw a couple of times to the left with minimal success. Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks. Continues with two games on the eve of the new year. First at 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Kentucky faces Florida State in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. Then at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, the 15th-ranked Clemson Tigers, led by the dual running back threat, take on the 23rd-ranked Auburn Tigers in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. The Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl, the Chick-fil-A Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Later today as Nesbitt gets close to the mark, but not all the way there. I'm just wondering, James, going back to the previous play, if Georgia Tech has noticed something about those particular out patterns, they keep going there. Well, they've seen something on film. Either the corners playing a little too soft, or they feel like they can th throw better to their right side. For whatever reason, is that the corner Damon Jinks is going to have to do something about either tightening up his coverage or getting it up and playing man to man on that side of the field. And the checks the wristband. Draw. And Fresno is waiting, but it looks like he has crossed over there to get that first down. Now, something important to remember is when you've got two, two quarterbacks practicing, you only get so many reps in practice. So you have to think that Nesbitt didn't get the same amount of reps that Taylor Benny did, which means he's only running certain plays. Right. Okay, so there's only a few plays that he's running, and most of those are going to be run plays, and then there's going to be maybe two or three that are going to be pass plays. Well, he's giving them exactly what they want on the ground, and it's completed his only pass. And again, we don't want to overemphasize that, but Taylor Bennett wondering, and I got a new coach coming in. I got a guy who loves to run the ball. I'm not a running quarterback. What is my future for my senior year at Georgia Tech? He had to wait for Reggie Ball to get a chance to play. And who knows what's going to happen now as we have a flag. <laughs> False start, 71 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. Let me ask you this question, James. Let's say, when we show you the false start by Ford Howard, let's say Taylor Bennett went out this year. And I know this is hypothetical. Let's say he was, maybe only Matt Ryan had better stats. Maybe right. he just lights up the ACC. Right. Now Paul Johnson still gets the job. Right. What do you do then if you're Paul Johnson? I, I think you have you only know what you know and as far what, what I mean by that is Paul Johnson knows the triple option and unless he's going to all of a sudden inst install a, a Rich Rodriguez style of offense which I'd be very surprised to see then I, I still believe he's had a, he's had a, a, a level of success for a reason and why would he change it now he knows what he knows yeah and there's a late flag coming in on that one. Another run by Nesbitt. They haven't even bothered handing the ball off. Every run play has been Nesbitt. Right. Now, the question, though, the second question of that, Dave, is can a quarterback like Nesbitt take the beating that he's going to take in the ACC? Because this is not, you know... You know, personal plans. foul, tripping, 61 on the offense, 15-yard penalty, replay first down. That's the right guard, Matt Rhodes, so that's going to take away that gain by Nesbitt, and that is a significant penalty, driving Georgia Tech all the way back to the Bulldogs' 45-yard line. Nesbitt staying in for this series, and maybe more. Now, we were told to expect him in this third series of the first quarter, or third series, whenever that would come along. We don't know if he's going to get any more playing time. He may be buying himself some time by being so good at running the ball, but now he's faced with a first and very long situation. They've got to get to the 20, all the way down to the 15. Well, there's one way to do it. And actually, that was dropped by the defensive back, Jenkins, almost as if the receiver and the defensive back had switched positions, but they've been picking on Jenkins here, James. Again, I don't know if they necessarily think Jenkins has showed something on film that gives them the idea that they can go after him, or they just feel better throwing the ball to their right side. Some quarterbacks just don't feel comfortable throwing the ball to, to their left. So maybe there's something there as well. James Johnson ended up being the DB that time. The junior receiver out of Florida knocked that down. So second down and 30. I think these are the ideal situations that you really want to see Nesbitt perform under because there's going to be long yardage situations in any ball game. And for a running quarterback, you have to be able to throw. They fake the pitch out, and Nesbitt again keeps the football. And he'll pick up six yards of the 39, brings up third down and 24, and that will be the end of the first quarter. 
So Georgia Tech in their 21st bowl game, trying to make it 12 and 9 overall. They have the edge after one over Fresno State, trying to knock off a BCS conference team. They've done 11 times already. They won an even dozen. They lead Boise. This Brody's Humanitarian Bowl. Eh? New Year No Limits, tonight on ESPN. My 99 Lincolns, you've been overlooked. Forgotten in couches, tossed carelessly in the fountains. You think you're worthless, but to me, you are a hot, juicy stack attack. Together, united, you are 99. It's wrong to spend your pennies on just anything when you're hungry. Attack your hunger with a new hot, juicy stack attack from Wendy's. Made with two fresh, never frozen beef patties stacked with cheese. There's no better double cheeseburger out there for only 99 cents. You've got to taste this. Only at Wendy's. That's right. If you want to quit smoking, think mint. Commit mint lozenges. Commit tastes great, works fast, and calms cravings even after the lozenge is gone. I was pretty nervous, uh, apprehensive. Uh... It was tough to tell him I was joining the Army at first. I uh, did research on my own, tried to get an idea about what the Army was going to be like. It's given me a whole bunch of confidence. But no, I'm, I'm very proud of it. He's just a stronger, more driven individual. He could outrun me. <laughs> if your son or daughter wants to talk about joining the Army, listen, you made them strong, we'll make them Army strong. Find out more at GoArmy.com. And now, another priceless pep talk from Peyton Manning. How's it going? Social life in the dumps? I hear you. Maybe what you need is just a few new dance moves. Hey, Derek. Show them what you got. Mm-hmm. I like it. Work it. All right, stop. Stop. That's enough. Seriously, you're going to hurt yourself. And this has been another priceless pep talk from Peyton Manning. Go to Priceless.com for a personalized pep talk you can send to a friend. The Bucket List is a gift to moviegoers. A wonderfully smart and inspiring film. Winner, one of the top ten films of the year. Proud of you. Nobody cares what you think. The Bucket List, rated PG-13. Now playing in select cities everywhere January 11th. I've driven a lot of different cars, but two things never change. No one demands more from their car than me, and nothing protects under the hood better than Pete. Peak Long Life Antifreeze is formulated with an advanced organic technology to protect any engine of any make, any model, any time. If you can drive it, Peak can protect it. And when I drive it, it better perform. Peak Long Life Antifreeze. When you peak, you win. in the Sugar Bowl. Welcome back to the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl as a part of Capital One Bowl Week. With James Hastie and Heather Cox, I'm Dave Lamont. From Bronco Stadium on the Boise State campus. And Taylor Bennett back in at quarterback on this series for Georgia Tech. After Josh Desmond ran around a bit, Taylor Bennett will be thrown down on third and long. The first sack of the game goes to John Munga. 34th sack of the year for the Fresno State defense. Well, you know what? If they're gonna they're gonna get pressure, they're gonna have to get it inside because they do a good job of sealing off the edge. John Monger does a good job of breaking down and not flying by the quarterback. Excellent job of wrapping him up. So it'll be the Ray Guy Award winner kicking to Batman. The Clifton Smith wants a fair catch. He's fighting a high high sun and did the right thing that time at the 10 yard line poor field position for the bulldogs last time though their offense began to click and they got on the board the rose bowl game presented by city illinois versus usc new year's day at 4 30 eastern on abc Thank you, 
Roadies. Roadies Truck Stops. It will change your life. One, two, three, three a day of dairy. Makes you feel so extraordinary. It's not always easy to make sure your family is getting the nutrients they need. That's why delicious, nutrient-rich milk, cheese, and yogurt play an important role in our diets. Have you had your three today? Milk, cheese, or yogurt, the healthy way. Three a day of dairy. Until now, guys that sweat a lot had to have a backup plan. Now there's a better plan. New Gillette Clinical Strength Antiperspirant. Powerful wetness protection. 34% better than a prescription product. A lot more confidence. Hey, Jason, you got that report, right? You bet. There's something different about you. Did you get a haircut? Gillette Clinical Strength Antiperspirant. Change your life, not your shirt. When you open a Samuel Adams lager and begin to pour it out, you get this beautiful amber color, and you put your nose in it, and you get the smell of flowers called hops. We use noble hops. They are expensive, but it's a better quality ingredient for a Boston lager. Most brewers have a dash of hops. We use a pound of hops per barrel. We add some caramel malt to that. Significant full flavor, but everything is there in balance. The proof is in the taste. John Tanuta, who's been functioning not just as the defensive coordinator, but also as the head coach interim basis for Georgia Tech, and his defense bent a little bit on that last drive. Yeah, well, big plays are going to be a part of this ball game. The team making up, not allow the fewest big plays are going to be. It's going to be the team that has success. Fresno State understanding that early on, and that had a, that was a good job attacking the ball. Attacking downfield. Marlon Moore disappointed with himself that he didn't get more out of the play, but he got it very close to a first down. Where Georgia Tech finally got a stop on a guy who has four touchdowns in his last five games. Marlon Moore is a guy that's really came on in the last three games. In particular, I watched the Kansas State game. We covered the Kansas State game, and Marlon Moore really, I, th I think, stepped up and said he wants to be the guy. Get him the ball as long with Bear Pascal. I think Fresno State has a chance to win the game. Checked off on that one. Hands off to Miller, and it'll work for a first down. May have seen a face mask in there, too, but I don't see a flag. I thought I saw somebody reach in there and grab a face mask. Maybe it wasn't the ball carrier, but it's going to be a first down for the Bulldogs anyway. Miller will check out. Now, if you want to play receiver in Pat Hill's offense, you have to block as a wide receiver. Great job by Marlon Moore coming down off the edge and sealing on the outside so that the running back can make, have room to pick up, pick up the first down. Good job, Marlon. Tom Brandstater, the quarterback for Pat Hill in his 11th year at Fresno State. A screen in the middle and no chance, no chance. That wasn't the ball that popped out. That was some equipment that came loose. But that play destroyed by Daryl Richard. He read that very, very well. And nothing there for Clifton Smith. You know, you're going to see a lot of screens and draws, I think, against this Georgia Tech defense. You have to do something to slow down the pressure. So what you're going to have to ask for from your defensive lineman if you're Georgia Tech is those guys are going to have to hustle to the football, and they're going to have to beat tackle, tackles as well. So beat blocks, should I say. And that was a great job there by Daryl Richard. Just a big, big target in Bear Pascal. 39 catches coming into the game, but four and four touchdowns. But that doesn't speak volumes about his value to this football team. Well, I tell you one thing: it, it tells me this is the first time we have called Philip Wheeler's name in this football game. It's a great play by the linebacker, but we haven't really heard about his name yet on blitzes and getting through to the quarterback, which is his specialty. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that they haven't sent the house just yet at the Grandstead. I'd like to see how he adjusts to the pressure. Another completion for the Bulldogs. Stepping out of bounds is Marlon Moore. You know, Bear Pascoe has become a legend on campus and among his teammates. More on that, we turn to Heather. 
Fair is right at home here in Boise with his Wranglers and Cowboy hat. He grew up on a cattle ranch and his first love, long before he put on a football helmet, was rodeo. In fact, he has a legitimate shot at not only making the NFL, but also a career as a professional team roper. He said his dream was first the NFL and then the National Finals Rodeo. One of his greatest roping moments came when he was 15 years old. He won a Dodge truck. He was too young to drive it. And yes, he's got about seven belt buckle trophies, one of which he wore yesterday. It's beautiful. It's, a, it's like jewelry, guys. <laughs> he, like. Was, he was very protective of that, uh, that belt buckle as well. We had to ask politely several times to get it from him. Lonnie Miller gets the first down into Yellow Jacket territory at the 45-yard line. So, James, first time around for Fresno State, they really didn't do very much, three and out. They moved the ball well the last time. They're moving the ball well here now. What are they doing? They're trying to run the football and establish, establish look what we're doing. We're going we're gonna to do what we're doing. We talked about Pat Hill earlier. It's, listen, we're going to run the ball downhill at you. You're going to have to show us you can stop us. And, Right now, Georgia Tech's not getting it done. Play action, trying to go deep here. Broken up beautifully, but there's a flag down, two flags down. Maybe not so beautifully, and it's D.J. Jones who can't believe the penalty might be on him. Well, he's a little early on the, on the play, so he's definitely pass interference. Pass interference, 23 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, you have a beeline pulse that's going to run right across the screen here, right there, and then you're going to have a pulse ran behind it. What it does is it pulls the safety down and exposes your, your coverage if you're on discipline. Bear Pascal here, we talked about him earlier, he'll make you pay if, you don't, if you're not disciplined in your coverage. How about the fact that they run the tight end deep on those kind of passes? And they get the interference penalty, putting the ball at the 30-yard line. And that's, good. that's a good point as well. You usually don't see your tight end run the deep post. Boy, look out there. That was nearly picked. And, but Moore spins away down to the sidelines and right around a first down. That play, James, we, of course, are our view up here. We can see the plays develop. Right. That was so close to being brought back the other way. That was risky. I mean, you usually don't see that, but here, here's the throw. Here's the pick pass. Right there, you want to get, get a, a kick-out block, but the cornerback does a good job in, in, of getting and beating the block. Uh, Morgan Burnett does, anyway, should I say. Marlon Moore, a great second effort to find, him, find an opportunity to get down the sideline and, and make guys miss. You know, Brad Stater, 8 of 10 for 100 yards so far, and picked up 9 on that one. Now straight ahead. First down and a little bit more. Getting to that second level you hear about with the 13-yard line. A little pushing after the play away from the ball, but Lonnie Miller with a solid right up the middle run. The play selection has been very interesting by the Bulldogs here. They, I think, have done an excellent job well, mixing this thing up. They've done a good job of bringing in different personnel packages. They've done a good job of giving you different formations. And all these things can be a little concerning to a defense. Last time inside the red zone, red zone, Fresno could not get anything but a field goal. They do like to throw to Pasco, and why not? You see the strength, the first team all whack tight end, the first Fresno State tight end ever to receive that honor. Ward Daniels on the stop. 39 catches. You, you would think for a first team guy at, at, at tight end, he'd have to have more than 39 catches, but obviously someone knows more than what we know, but the guy has great hands, does a good job of blocking, uses his hands well. What more can you ask for? Four catches, 48 yards. I can, I can tell you more. He can block kicks, too. He's got four block kicks in his career, and he's blocked two field goals this year, so he can do a lot for this football team. That's Moore in the backfield. They pitch it to him. Get a great block. Oh. Well, what a block yeah. by Smith. Wow. And that's a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Clifton Smith, <laughs> Coach Hill said he's the heart and soul of their team, and I can see why. The guy can do pretty much everything you want out of a running back. He's coming, he's, uh, by the way, he's also a former cornerback. So I, I had to throw that in. I knew you would okay. eventually, but, yeah. 
Now, second quarter, let me write that down. Look, look, at this, look at this formation. I mean, these are the things that Pat Hill brings to your team when he's on the sideline. All these different variations and these different looks. Well, here's a different look. <laughs> now, that was kind of unusual, to say the least. For your point after touchdown. And from the whack. In the whack home field, Fresno State has taken the lead. Bear Pasco contributes, so does Marlon Moore, and the hot quarterback and Tom Bradstrader. Now let's find out how the Yellow Jackets respond when they get the ball back. I saw this in the window and thought it was so old mutual. I just had to try it, it on. It is so old mutual. Dude. I think we just achieved old mutual. Can you believe Johnson got that promotion? I mean, what makes him so old mutual? He is married to Crenshaw's daughter. It may sound strange now, but with our new thinking about your financial future, it won't for long. Houston, we are go for old mutual. I am so hungry. My truck just broke down over here. I have got to get to Rody. Think there's any way that you guys could help me out? Rody's truck stop? Yeah. Let's go. Hook it up, man. Hook it up, man. We got work to do. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're almost there. Come on. We're almost there. Hey, thanks for the help, Coach. Hey, anything to get you to a Rody's. Trapped by congestion and coughing? Break free with new Alka-Seltzer Plus mucus and congestion. It breaks up what's got your chest clogged up. New Alka-Seltzer Plus Mucus and Congestion. In a world ruled by fear, a lone assassin... It's him. You killed my partner. ...started a war. You and I are gonna finish this. Jet Li. Jason Statham. War. Only on DVD and Blu-ray January 1st. 240 miles above the Earth when IMAX needed to power their camera. They trusted Duracell. And if you think advanced technology is only for outer space, consider this. Down here, now you can take up to 5,000 pictures over the life of two batteries. New Duracell rechargeables. Recharge in just 15 minutes. They're rechargeables reinvented. So whether it's some amazing shots today, or you're gazing a little further into the future, it just has to work. Duracell. Trusted everywhere. Well, you get your hands in your hot players, and Marlon Moore, five touchdowns in his last six games. Help from Bear Pasco on that drive, also a very impressive march for the Bulldogs. So Georgia Tech having a little trouble with a kickoff. Better find it. Still loose. Very important to get in there and start pulling guys out of there. For the other team, whatever you do, get in there and pull guys out of there. Just don't grab by the neck. Well, yes. Yeah. That's what happened last <laughs> week in the NFL. <laughs> Big East crew stepping in the middle of all that. Males limit it. The Yellow Jackets ball. Don't want to let that ball get into your body. You want to catch that ball with your arms and your hands. And Jonathan Dwyer lets it get into his body and puts himself in a little bit of a problem here. The funny thing is, James, we were concerned about the sun on the other side of the yeah. field getting in the eyes of the kick returners, but that time, that really wasn't the excuse for Dwyer. That one hit him in the pads. So Taylor Bennett will start this series after Josh Desmond started the last one. You go to choice. Well, that'll erase all sorts. Of, he put the ball down. Now, was he down, though? The whistles didn't come right away, but it looks like they're going to mark him down after that solid gain of 20 yards for Tashar Choice. Definitely down. Harris Definitely down. On the stop. Here you see Tashar Choice coming off the trap play, hitting it up inside, getting his pass low so he doesn't have to worry about fumbling the football, but want to hold on to that thing all the way through. Oh, look, wait, wait. Looks like it's out. It was out, but where was his knee? Oh, I think that's out. Well, I don't hear anybody uh, throwing any flags or stopping any officials. How about the block, by the way, by Matt Rhodes, the guard who came around and took? Yeah, they yeah, are going to stop this one. came out, Dave. I was about to say, the guard, uh, Matt Rhodes, made a heck of a block. The previous play will be reviewed. 
Took out two of the Bulldog defenders. Yeah, take a look here. But now, let's see. Uh, I can't really tell from that angle. That's a tough angle. Now, what tough you angle. are looking at is exactly what the replay official is looking at. So we're all in this together. Right there. Looks like it's out. His knee is not on the ground. Yeah, you're right there. That is a, an angle that may. But here's the thing. Who did they declare to have recovered the football? No, well, that's a key. <laughs> See what that's I mean? That's key. I don't know. All right. Say the ball is out. Now, we never had any kind of a signal that said it was Fresno State football that I saw. That, that angle I can't really tell as well, but that first it's, angle we saw it looked pretty clear to me. It's his right leg that you have to watch as to whether or not it's down. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Georgia Tech. It's got to be pretty conclusive, and I don't know if that necessarily was either. So, to short choice, 45 yards already in this first half, and he takes a breather. Well, Jonathan Dwyer, his replacement, had a, had a fantastic year as well, so don't, don't think there's going to be a lot of drop-off at all. And he gets it out to the 39-yard line, dragged down by the strong safety, Moses Harris. Now, it is time for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac! And the question is, who was the MVP of the 2004 Humanitarian Bowl. Now, as a reminder, you can do this interactively. If you'd like to take a shot at this question, text CF to 4 ESPN. That's 43776. And you can pick from four choices. Get choice back in the game. Peak to tight end is going in motion. He sort of followed him into the line, and you see the strength of choice that time. Picking up a couple of yards. Well, we are in Boise, although the Broncos aren't playing. It is their stadium and their field, and their coach joins our Heather Cox. Certainly a very familiar face, Chris Peterson. And, Coach, tomorrow marks the one-year anniversary of the Fiesta Bowl win, probably the greatest game in college football history. What do you remember most about that game? Just that it was a great football game. It was, it was awesome to be a part of. It was good for our program. I think it's kind of given us more awareness throughout the country. A year later, you are coming off a disappointing loss to ECU in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Now that you've had a chance to reflect, what do you think went wrong? Well, the kids fought hard. East Carolina was a really good team. We started slow, and, you know, we just kind of ran out of time. And, and uh, you know, to East Carolina's credit, those guys played very well. And it was a hard-fought game. You never can tell what's going to happen in these bowl games. Well, we wish you the best of luck next season. And, guys, hard to believe, but these rivals in season, actually, Coach Peterson had Coach Hill and the entire Fresno State staff over to his house this week to wish them luck. And also, you can tell a definite bias in this crowd, too, here in Boise, James, because they're definitely pulling for the whack entrance. Yeah. No yeah. question. Well, I wonder if Coach Peterson would have had Coach Hill over if they had been planning to. That would have been different. That would have been unprecedented, <laughs> I think. Two out of four, Georgia Tech on third, taking the mid-deep shot to the tight end, incomplete, trying to get it to Colin Peake, and it goes incomplete, second out of ten coming up. Well, Chris Peterson's name has uh, been mentioned for many jobs, and my hat's off to him for saying, listen, I'm going to be at Boise State, and that's the end of it. Well, what a bizarre offseason, though, for college football coaching and rumors and firings, and this guy's going this way, and I heard so-and-so contacted somebody. I mean, it has been just as strange. Not even really an offseason. We still have a bunch of bowl games to go yet. It's been, this month of December has been one of the most bizarre what, in what, college history. Well, what you mean by offseason, that there is no offseason. You can get yeah. fired midseason. It doesn't matter. Stick it on the ground, a little trick play that time, going to Char Choice with a direct snap. But Fresno was ready for it. It gets a little bit there. It'll be third down, and they've got to get it to the Bulldog 46-yard line. They'll need six. If I'm a if I'm a general manager or a head coach for a National Football League team, everything about the Char Choice I'm impressed with. He's graduated early, graduated in December. He's done everything you want, you can ask of him as far as a football player on this football team. Well, big month for him is coming up in January. He'll yep. be training in Arizona and then plays in the Senior Bowl. Fresno brings the blitz. 
handled well by Georgia Tech. They get the first down. Bennett's looked pretty good in this game. And he completes that one to D.J. Donnelly. Tradition that continues here with the Rose Bowl game tomorrow, New Year's Day in ABC, as the 13th-ranked Fighting Illini make their first trip to the Rose Bowl game since 1984. They take on the 7th-ranked USC Trojans, the Rose Bowl game presented by City on ABC tomorrow, January 1st at 4.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. James, people are talking up USC as they're the best team in the country at the moment. You buying into that? At the moment, I am buying into it. And I'll tell you, great job by Charles Tober. But I'll tell you what, just the fact that they're they're in their, their confines, they know where they're at, they're going to be playing the Rose Bowl. They've always been playing in the Rose Bowl. They, they play there on a, almost on an annual basis <laughs> when it comes to the Rose Bowl. I, I think it's going to be a little bit overwhelming for Illinois. It's going to be a little bit of a wild wow factor for them, and I think that may play a part. Well, what a job by Ron Zook, winner of the Coach of the Year Award, and almost wound up playing the Gators in a bowl game, which would have really been fascinating, but he ends up in the Rose Bowl, and certainly a proud moment for the Illini and their fans. They've got to be absolutely part of the expression juiced for this game. And that one probably should have been caught. A little bit high, but off the hands of D.J. Donnelly. Well, you know, going back to Coach Zook, you know, I had Coach Zook as a defensive back coach when I was playing in the pros, and, uh, you know, it's just, you, you can tell the guy had something about him, that it factor, you know, when it came to being a coach. I'm not surprised that he's uh, having success right now. There he's a legendary, hardworking recruiter. Yep. There are stories of him leaving yep. assistant coaches in gas stations because they go in to get a drink while he's filling up gas. He fills up the tank and splits. Well, look yes. at that. You got an Illini supporter on our crew there. Georgia Tech, three out of five on third down. They've hit both of them on this drive, and we have a play. Timeout, Fresno State. It's their first no time flag, it'll be the Bulldogs taking their first of three timeouts. On defense, they seem to have the advantage in third and 14. Going over and over, it's not just you. Stopping and starting, going urgently, you're not alone. Lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax may relieve urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. And who doesn't want to spend less time in the bathroom? Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not prostate cancer. Common side effects of Flomax are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Upon standing, a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. So when starting Flomax, avoid situations where injury could result. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Do what millions of guys have already done. Ask your doctor about Flomax and call 877-4-FLOMAX for a free one-week trial. Why wait? Join the crowd. Flomax could make a difference in one week. Hey. Hey. Whew. Yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Well, when I'm hurt and miss work, Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yep. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. <laughs> ESPN College Football, the Willie's Humanitarian Bowl, is brought to you by Aflac, ask about it at work, Flomax, and Dursa, trusted everywhere. I don't want to uh, embarrass anybody, but the per diem didn't arrive for our crew for this game, so this is how they had to catch their dinner <laughs> yesterday. But I understand that the fishing went very well and the crew ate well, so I'm happy to hear that. There's our score in time. It's not warm here in Boise. But it is an absolutely gorgeous day. Temperature in the middle 20s. Receiver's out of bounds. So had that pass, had he come back in and caught it, it wouldn't have made any difference well, at all. But the pattern was pushed out of bounds. Great if he was forced out of bounds. Well, you know, once again, the former defensive back immediately. <laughs> if he was forced out of bounds. As long as he makes an effort to get back in bounds as soon as possible, right. if he's forced out, then he's allowed to catch the ball. Will Harding was on the coverage for the Bulldogs. Which was great coverage, by the way. Great coverage. 
Yeah, can't, we can't tell if he was pushed out, but he did to make, make an effort to get back in. So Durant Brooks kicking to Clifton Smith. This is a great matchup. Clifton Smith is the NCAA active leader in punt return. Average at the fate and wide open. Georgia Tech with Brooks. There is a flag down on the other end of the field. They go into the bag and they throw the ball to Joe Gaston, the safety. But will it hold up? Illegal formation, perhaps? And that may be, because there's flags now on either side of the field, we're noticing. And it usually means someone wasn't on the line of scrimmage or someone wasn't off the ball. And that's a risk when you run these new plays. Yep. Illegal formation. There we go. Kicking team. Six minutes on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Someone Three wasn't play, fourth on. down. It's tough to see. It's tough to see who wasn't on the line of scrimmage, but I tell you, you work on this type of play all week long, coming up to a game like this, so, just so that you, you can run it, and then to have someone not up on the line of scrimmage is that's tough because you can't run this fake again. No, you know, this is pretty much a one-shot <laughs> deal. All right, let's count them here, James. So you just count them off. We got the punter one. You got you get three protection. Right. Yeah. Well, look. We can't argue can't with really this Biggie's crew. They get the last word, but now they're in a more standard formation. And Brooks, not one of his better kicks unless he gets a big roll. He will go inside the 20, though, and that's the most important part for any punter. He's done that twice already, and now another flag comes in. And this might have to do... Well, let's wait and see. Dead ball, personal foul, gets the receiving team. That would be half the distance, first down. Well, again, the least penalized team in the WAC this year is Fresno State. And Pat Hill right now may be hotter than that hat of his about that penalty. <laughs> destroyed everything my people my friends my home all I have left is vengeance unreal tournament 3 rated M for mature PlayStation 3 starting at 399 as they battle Heisman winner Tim Tebow in Florida. New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. for professionals. Every call to Safe Auto comes here, to a Safe Auto call center. Here, our licensed insurance professionals make it easy to get the affordable coverage you deserve. Money's a little tight. Safe Auto told me I could start my policy with a post-dated check. That really helps. With Safe Auto, I make low monthly payments. Now that's what I call easy to live with. So call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and talk to a licensed insurance professional today. Play it safe, safe, Pat Hill, an unhappy man after a personal foul penalty after a punt that wasn't even returned, wound up costing his team nine additional yards. They're back at their own nine-yard line. Well, this is going to be a hard-fight game. It's tough to see either one of these offenses go the distance, so you're going to need, you know, go the length of the field, so you're going to need as much field position as possible. Well, Fresno State's offense the last couple of times out, though, they've looked really good and really mixing their plays well. Surprisingly, there's no sacks right now 
uh, by Georgia Tech's defense. And the other surprise is how well the Bulldogs have run the football. That time it's Anthony Harding. That'll put Fresno State about 70 yards in this half. And normally, Georgia Tech gives up about 100 yards per game on the ground. Great job of this offensive line. You know, we don't talk about the offensive line enough, but great job of just walling guys off and creating a huge hole there for Harding to run through. How about a persistent run? He took some defenders a couple of additional <laughs> yards, too. Tackling good running backs, you got to tackle them low. We talked about this in some of our broadcasts early in the year, you know, Dave. You have to hit the good running backs in their legs. You can't tackle them up high. That pass into traffic. Nice catch that time by Clifton Smith. Brought down immediately by Jahi Ward Daniels. You know, in, in, in games like this where it's just basically teams are very, very evenly matched, pass protection, giving your quarterback a chance to get rid of the football, as well as run, run blocking is going to be critical. And the offensive line is going to be key throughout this ball game, both teams. Brad Stater, 10 of 12 for 111. And of course, you're talking about, you know, they, we've talked so much about the Georgia Tech defense, but this is a line, as you see, with the experience and the talent to keep them off the quarterback's back. Well, Coach Newton and Coach Hill both know each other very well, so maybe that's playing a factor here in this ballgame. And that time, that was nearly a sack and incomplete, almost a complete disaster for the Bulldogs. That time, Brandstater held the ball quite a bit longer than he probably should have. Heather? Guys, after that timeout, Pat Hill walked by and said three out of the four from behind the ten. Certainly very frustrated at the field position. This Fresno State offense really having to earn its keep today. And they've done it without a particularly glittering third down record either. They're only one out of three. Well, as a defensive line, if you can't get to the quarterback and sack him, the next best thing is to get your hands up and just read his eyes. And that's what Georgia Tech was did well last, last play. Well, that's how you counter the blitz right there with the speed of Smith. Still going. If he goes right, he's got a chance. Woo, a spectacular screen pass. Wow. All the way to the Georgia Tech 39-yard line. No flags. Burnett and Ward Daniels finally brought him down. Well, Clifton Smith wears a Batman shirt underneath his pads that he's worn since high school, so they call him Batman. And I, I think we see why now. I mean, he, he's running like a superhero for this crowd right now. I mean, spin moves, juke moves, stiff arms. I mean, what more can you ask for? I mean, this is a guy, no, the numbers don't jump off the chart of what he's done this year, but I tell you what, MVP, he surely is for this team. One thing also I noticed, James, is Lanier Miller gets the ball and may have lost it. Let's see if he's ruled down or not. It looks like the officials are going to say that any lost football comes out after and it, it's not going to matter. It's going to be second down, according to the officials. Georgia Tech says they have the ball, but you saw the officials with that two fingers for second down. Here you see him going in with two hands on the ball. We just can't see it from this angle when it comes out. Well, the whistle's a blow. The ball's been marked at the 34-yard line. Well, now the key is, well, they must have recovered it. Obviously, they're not going to review this. Well, what I'm impressed with, James, what I was about to say before that ball was dropped is how Fresno State is utilizing so many different players right. and different formations. I mean, nothing is exactly what you think it's going to be. Oh, wide open down here. Is he ever open? Wide open. Oh. <laughs> I think. <laughs> See, now, th there's an example when you have two defenders and they're both playing what's called in-and-out coverage on receivers, meaning if one receiver goes in, I got him, and if one receiver goes out, you have him. Well, if they both go out, then two guys, one guy has to try to cover one, and it doesn't work that way. Well, so that's why most teams don't like playing in-and-out coverage on receivers because they can do that tendency to both go out, and now one guy, one defender is trying to cover both receivers. It doesn't work. Well, Brad Stater, 12 of 15, 178. This year at 2-2, thought he was on his way to the end zone and basically tripped over the five-yard line, but still, 30 yards on that one. And straight ahead, Bulldogs power football. Not in, say the officials, with Anthony Harding. Really, really impressed by Pat Hill's football team. I mean, they understand about coming out and giving you different personnel looks. 
Here's a good, here's a running back just getting his heart and getting his pass real, getting his pass lower than the defender and using his legs to run through the defender as well. And you saw the football did not make it, so the officials were spot on with that call, but a second down and goal. They do want to review it, though, to be completely safe, but our angle... The previous the goal play line will be reviewed. Looked like the ball didn't make it over. The helmet did, but right. it's got to be the ball. Right, it has to be the ball. Good job by the offensive line here again, establishing a new line of scrimmage, and Harding just getting his pass low and trying to run his feet through the, through the tackler. Doesn't cross the line. Doesn't look like it crosses the line there. Not a bad idea to review it, but I think the officials are going to be vindicated on this. Big East crew coming out to Boise. I'm just impressed with Pat Hill's use. And we talk about personnel. You know, you talk about 11 personnel is one back, one tight end, and three receivers, or 12 personnel. And it, it causes the defense to have to match up differently. Most people don't understand what, what does personnel changes mean. It, it means certain guys that aren't used to covering a receiver or a running back now have to do that, and it puts them in a bad situation. Really on the field is confirmed. Ball short of the goal line, second down. And while we were waiting, this crowd erupting for what is technically the home team in the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl, Fresno State. And Pat Hill was absolutely thrilled with the way they were received here, too, in Idaho, getting a great, great amount of love from the Boise State fans. Well, I think both teams were well received. I mean, I uh, definitely agree with uh, Fresno State, but I think Georgia Tech has uh, had very positive things to say as well. 85 on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Well, this is a guy that you would not have figured would make this mistake. There's, there's Bear on right here near the nearest to us here. See just a small flinch there. Boy, that was a tough call. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you, you, you get tied in the benefit of the doubt, but uh, wow, it's a tough crew. <laughs> well, I tell you what, that's that is rugged. That's sharp-eyed officiating to spot that one. Once again, Fresno trying to grind it out, and they catch one to Clifton Smith. One thing I don't see here for the uh, Bulldogs, I don't see the big 245-pound behemoth back coming off right. the block or to carry. That's just not the way they do things. And, of course, again, they're missing Ryan Matthews, the freshman from Bakersfield, California, who had 13 rushing touchdowns this year. But certainly Fresno State has run the ball very, very well in this first half. Something interesting that I've noticed here that last play is the nose tackle, Dale Richard, is almost offsides. Mm -hmm. He's lining up so close to the ball, he's almost virtually offsides. Well, earlier we asked you our AFLAC trivia question. Who is the MVP of the 2004 Humanitarian Bowl? Take a moment to think of the two teams that are playing here. Might be the answer. <laughs> you think? Mm, let's see. Yeah, P.J. Daniels. And 53% of you realize that P.J. Daniels of Georgia Tech, what a day he had, by the way. You want to talk about an MVP? I don't know how anybody could have voted for anybody else. Against Tulsa, P.J. Daniels ran for 307 yards and four scores. The Yellow Jackets dominated that game 52 to 10 over the Golden Hurricane. And that was also a huge day for the Georgia Tech defense. Yeah, P.J. Daniels now playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the short choice couldn't speak highly enough about P.J. Daniels. He was kind of like his uh, mentor. He mentored uh, to short choice, and they have a very similar running style. Another changed formation in the last second. Suddenly they go in. Now, here's the problem. Whenever you go empty backfield, as Fresno State just did, it forces the defense to come out of any blitz that they may have been in. Now they have to come out of that blitz, and that's 
that's something only Pat Hill can tell you why you know he understood exactly what coach Sununu wanted to do there that was Drew Lubinsky getting the touchdown catch. Yep. don't forget Isaac Kinder the backup tight end one of those eight players sent home right. for a curfew violation that opens up the job for the backup to pass go to Jesus Tapia and to Lubinsky and Lubinsky gets the six pointer well, I find it interesting, James. A lot of the talk we had before the game was how confusing Georgia Tech can be on defense. At the moment, I got to be honest, they're the ones who look confused. Very much so. So the Bulldogs have a lot of friends here in Boise. Even the Bronco fans are behind the representative from the WAC, and they're in charge right now with the Roadies Humanitarian Bowl. difference between good and great. Take, for example, Fresno State engineering graduate Sam Icabellis. He went from draftsman to deputy chairman at Rockwell International in a career spanning over four decades. Today, Sam is still considered a top aerospace engineer. Whoever said getting a college degree was not rocket science never met Sam. Never underestimate the ability of any graduate, especially one from Fresno State. That is Drew Lubinsky who has the second touchdown for Fresno State today. They have looked fantastic on offense after a three and out. If you were with us early, it looked like Georgia Tech was, had really established themselves in the very beginning of the ball game, but it is going to be nine plays, 91 yards, and a four and a half minute drive, and Lubinsky gets the touchdown catch. So Jamal Evans trying to get started. What a cutback that was. I don't know how he kept his feet to stay to the 25-yard line. We go to Bristol and Reese Davis. All right, coming up on the Flomax Halftime Report, guys, Brian Billick Dunn is head coach of the Baltimore Ravens. We'll have some reaction and give you the latest on that. Robert Smith is here. He played for Brian when Brian was the offensive coordinator at Minnesota. We'll also check in on Air Force in a wild one against Cal in a bowl game and also get a little pep talk from Lou Holtz for the Fighting Illini. We'll see you at halftime. All right, reason now we'll see the two-minute offense for Georgia Tech. They began the game with with some success. Always a good idea to get in Choice's hands. But he hasn't really dominated the game as we thought he might just yet. Anyhow, right. still has the ability to do so. Yeah, but let's let's go back to that last touchdown because I thought that was very good, a good job of coaching on Pat Hill's part. They go empty backfield, which means there's no other back in the backfield beside the quarterback. And when you go empty backfield, now you force linebackers to have to come out and cover guys that they normally don't like to cover. A huge advantage, credit to the coaching staff on taking that, getting Georgia Tech out of that blitz and making them play man-to-man. -man. James Johnson gets the first down catch for Georgia Tech. Owens on the stop. Now James Johnson was supposed to be the guy that was going to replace uh, Calvin Johnson. He was supposed to be the heir apparent. Now, you know, we know you can't replace Calvin Johnson that easily, but uh, James Johnson is supposed to have that type of talent. Yeah, but what about now with Paul Johnson as the head coach starting a city? Basically, he's got a friend that's going to announce his staff tomorrow. And by the way, he'll be with us in the third quarter. The approach will be different. Good coverage. That'll bring up second down. Trying to get to get it to James Johnson. Good coverage by Damian Owens. You know, we, we're, we're going to talk to Coach Johnson here in a little while. One of the things that I noticed when Nesbitt went in the game is penalties. And, and Navy was the... They had the fewest penalties of any team in the country this year. And the only way I think you can be successful with the triple option is if you don't commit penalties. And you saw an example of when Nesbitt came in and they committed the penalties. Now you're forced to do something that you're not, you don't do so well, which is called the football. Bennett rolling against his arm. Going to the right side, low pass, but nicely scooped out. That's a fine play by Greg Smith, the sophomore from Atlanta. to get the first down for the Yellow Jackets. He was smart enough to get out of bounds also. Greg Smith, a guy that has good vertical speed. 
see you see Bennett getting out of the pocket, something that they talked about a little bit when we talked to John Barn about getting Bennett on the move. Here's a, here's a here's a play that symbolizes what that getting Bennett out of the pocket, allowing him to use his legs and create some plays on it with, with, with extended play. But it closed quickly. Heather? Well, guys, quarterback Taylor Bennett started out the game without a glove on that left throwing hand. Don't forget that is the hand that he injured a ligament against Georgia in their last game. He has since put a glove on that left hand. Now, yesterday he told us he may wear it to help him keep warm. He didn't start with it, now has it on James. What does that tell you about that injured hand? Well, he's also cold. I think <laughs> he came out. He, he didn't need to come out. I, I understand what they were trying to do with Nesbitt, but. When that first, those first two series, Taylor Bennett was moving the football and he was very effective with the with the with his throws, and then they pull him out and put Nesbitt in. I just didn't like how they disrupted the timing. So he's probably cold. Well, Capital One Bowl Week, James, featuring over 20 bowl games in a dozen days on the ESPN family of networks, continues with a couple of games on the eve of the new year. First at 4 Eastern on ESPN, Kentucky faces what's left of Florida State's football team in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. Then at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, the 15th ranked Clemson Tigers, led by their dual running back threat, taking on the 23rd ranked Auburn Tigers in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. The Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl and the Chick-fil-A Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN later today. Listen, it's a little nippy um, on that sideline. Yeah. And there's no heaters down there. Right. So Taylor Bennett is probably rightly putting that glove on his hand. Georgia Tech has one timeout left. Well, what tackle in the open field. That is an amazing, amazing tackle because that play was so well set up. And that's John Manga who has a sack already in this game. But Pat Hill's got to be thrilled with that because if Manga doesn't make that, that's a big play. Now they're going to hurry up, which is smart. He tackled one of the best running backs in the country that way. Contested and out of bounds. He had no choice but to go to Colin Peak, the tight end, who was blanketed by Moses Harris. And Georgia Tech will have to punt. Great coverage downfield by that Fresno State secondary. You want to see Taylor Bennett make a better decision there because that could have been intercepted. Yeah, it was a very close call. No question about that. Go ahead and throw that away and give your team a chance to line up. Well, I said they will have to punt, but I don't see anybody out there with a punter's uniform on. So they're going to go for it here with only 23 seconds to go. Fourth and seven. Boys, uh, Fresno State with a couple of timeouts left if this doesn't work. Punt that football there. I just think the field position is a huge fact in this game. You've, get, you've given them, you've given, they still have their timeouts available, so they can still get themselves down close enough to get at least a field goal out of this. Well, they've got two timeouts. They got a hot quarterback in Grand State. Not bad field position at all at the enemy 47 yard line. And, and there you're right, the John Canuda. Rolling it on the interim coach, taking a chance at it, rolling those dice, and it just didn't pay that time. And Bennett certainly tried to make something happen, but Fresno State's the team with the sacks in this game and not Georgia Tech. Momentum going into halftime is probably one of the un most underrated aspects of football that uh, there is right now. I mean, guys can go with their heads down, and then, then you lose them for the rest of the game. Wisely goes to Pasco, short of the first down. Hmm. That's our guest in the third quarter there, Paul Johnson. Well, he didn't look real happy about that, no, that conversion. He does not. <laughs> he absolutely does not. He's wondering about John Tenuta. He actually wanted to be the head coach, George Tech. Interview. Paul Johnson got the job, had a meeting with Tenuta, and Tenuta said, you know what, I think I'll just go on and take my chances on the job market elsewhere. And Paul Johnson already has a defensive coordinator hired. Almost too much room that time. Well, you, you'd have to think that that'd be a very difficult situation for those two guys to work together. You know, I uh, agree. I, I think it was probably the best for both of those guys to go a different direction. Got seven seconds left as Yurochuchu makes this catch. 
a lot of room, James. Just a stick route, just going up, getting a certain amount of yardage, sitting down, and it's all about timing. There's no one to disrupt the timing, so it's going to be an easy throw and catch there. Remember, they have their two timeouts. Stitzer, his longest is 52 yards, so he is certainly in his range. Now, kicking a cold football is not any fun. And they were struggling kicking the ball in this direction. Uh, the, both teams were having, having a tough time kicking field goal that direction. They go to that same side of the field again, though, and now the field goal will be a lot shorter with four seconds to go. That's Moore with another catch. Yeah, just... Here we go. Let's see what we get. Uh, Clint Stitzer brings in a perfect grade point average. He's won the Dean's Medal. He's a finalist for the Werfel Award. And he won the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl Humanitarian Award for Fresno State. 14 to 22 this year. So. For 39. Right on. Boy, I tell you what, that decision on fourth down being second guessed, I'm sure, by the Georgia Tech fans, why Pat Hill's team runs off the field to a warm reception on a cool day in Boise, Idaho. Our halftime score. Schemes that he's implemented as well to give his team a chance to win this game. And they start out with an empty backfield. And they start out with a first down and a lot more to the explosive Clifton Smith. It took a hit, but it's wow. still the first down. That's Batman. <laughs> it is. We take a look at some of the numbers from the first half. And the 205 passing yardage, you know, Tom Brandstater has one 300-yard career game. That was against Kansas State in November, and he's on his way to one of those right now. And here's the big thing right here. The number one sack team in the country, James. Zero. Well, the other, the other stat that's important to make note of is is, is 54 yards right now for Tashar Choice. That's surprising as well. Here's a guy that's averaged 119 yards, and he's only had eight eight touches so far. You gotta have the ball. You know, I'm, I'm just saying that Fresno has been so dominant, and you're getting a good gain here, and another solid hit. And we have a Georgia Tech player who was injured on that hit. Anthony Harding was the player whom he collided with, and unfortunately, you see the result of that. Yeah, Avery Robinson's down, and that uh, pr pretty nasty looking hit there. It sounded great, but the result not great. And Avery Robertson made the tackle and the senior from Atlanta. Yeah, you see him. He's gonna, you know, watch here as Harding gets around outside the corner here. Robertson turns his head and it almost gets hit right in the where you, you know, equivalent to where his temple would be. Mm -hmm. It's a those are those are scary shots. Just turns right there on the tackle. So with 14-21 left in the third quarter, we'll return to the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. So we're going to visit the land of our ancestors. Ireland? No. Credit card miles expired. Think more distant relatives. This is great! Hey, it's me, Cousin Bob! Going down. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. See, kids, first class all the way. Something smells good. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> My 99 Lincolns, you've been overlooked. Forgotten couches, tossed carelessly in the fountains. You think you're worthless, but to me, you are a hot, juicy stack attack. Together, united, you are 99. It's wrong to spend your pennies on just anything when you're hungry. Attack your hunger with a new hot, juicy stack attack from Wendy's. Made with two fresh, never frozen beef patties stacked with cheese. There's no better double cheeseburger out there for only 99 cents. You gotta taste this. Only at Wendy's. That's right. We worked on Sam Adams Light for over two years. The whole brewery staff was dedicated. Sam Adams Light doesn't look, smell, or taste like other light beers. Yeah, to win in Germany is a pretty good accomplishment. I'm proud that I was involved in it. If you want to quit smoking, think mint. Commit mint lozenges. Commit tastes great, works fast, and calms cravings even after the lozenge is gone. Eleven years of fencing and three years of law school teach you a lot. For him, it's confidence. For me, it's pride. 
Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how your child could become one of the many student athletes who go pro in something other than sports. Today's game is being broadcast on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Well, we had a very scary moment about two minutes ago with Avery Roberson, and that's him standing there. He, we suspect, got knocked out on a tackle. And the great news is he's walking. Now, he doesn't feel well right now, obviously, and he's pretty dizzy, but at least he's up. Yeah. You know, I've had the unfortunate uh, circumstance to play with two guys that uh, were injured. And, uh, you know, Mike Utley being one of them, and he played in Detroit, but I played with Mike in, uh, at, at, at the Washington State. And then I was actually on the field when Dennis Bird was injured. Uh, with the New York Jets and you know just just seeing that type of hit just brought back so many awful memories from me. All right take a second your advice for the younger player out there what did he do wrong? Well turned his head you don't ever want to turn your head because no matter what type of pad protection gear you may have on you know hitting that area near your temple is just it's too tender of an area to mess around with and so uh, you want to keep your head up you don't want to turn your head like that and expose yourself to you know that type of shot. I'm just so glad to pick up. It's remarkable. It certainly didn't look very, very good at all when it first happened. Second and four. The pass may have been deflected. It'll bring up third down at four. Now, what I've ha I have seen happen after a play like that has occurred, uh, when, a, when a team, your opponent has lost it and loses a player like that, the very next series or the exact series that it happened in, that team goes up top, and I mean goes deep. And throw, try, try to go deep and try to score a touchdown here. Don't be surprised to see if Fresno State do try to do something like that. Roberson, the backup of the defensive back to Morgan Burnett. He began the year as the starter. Burnett took over the job the last month of the season. Third down and four. Wheeler clear on the blitz. But how about Brandstater? Wheeler is in on the tackle, but Brandstater avoided the blitz. Gaston finally made the stop. Joe Gaston. Heather, do you have more on Avery Roberson? I do indeed. I just talked to the EMTs that were assessing Avery Roberson while he was on the Fresno State sideline. They assured me that there is no doubt, there is no spinal injury. They kept him on the ground long enough to assess that and make sure that they can move him. He is now being assessed by the Georgia Tech medical staff. Both the Fresno State players and the Georgia Tech players, when the injury occurred, all took a knee immediately surrounding him. I was standing right there, and there's certainly a chance of encouragement for Avery, which certainly helped him when he got off the field, guys. Big hole. Big chance for a touchdown. He'll go. No flags. Clifton Smith. Touchdown. Bulldogs. Well, we know why now. I mean, he's, why he's an MVP. He's truly a, a special Player. The penalty flag will be for the jumping on the sign and jumping into the stands. Nice I mean, just, block. Just, just well blocked, you know, from, from everybody out there. And put the Smith virtually goes untouched. Not a single body there to, to get a hand on. Nate Adams, the fullback, is the one who had that last block that really spoke. Sportsmanlike conduct, excessive celebration on the ball carrier. It'll be a 15-yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. No, that's a, that's a not a very Pat Hill like move there. You know, no, no. Unsportsmanlike like penalties in the end zone called on his team very often. Yeah, I'm ambivalent about that call. Um, I guess he did do something he shouldn't have done, but it is a bowl game. And it was a touchdown, but that's okay. Stits are on for the PAT. Fresno State has blown this game open. They were losing 7-0 in the first quarter, and they have reeled off 27 unanswered points. We'll see if the Yellow Jackets can find an answer when they get the football for the first time in the second half. And Paul Johnson, the new coach, will be joining us in this quarter. Every year about this time, something magical happens. 
The red tags come out for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag event. Look for the red tag and your chance to get the best price of the season on 2008 Buick Pontiac and GMC models. And the price on that tag is the price you pay. With $1,000 red tag event bonus cash, get this low mileage lease on a 2008 Pontiac G6 for around $199 per month. Call for details. Hurry. The red tag event ends January 2nd. See your Buick Pontiac GMC dealer today. At the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, we test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. On January 4th, that's not my ringtone. When the call goes straight to voicemail, your world... That's your voice. ...goes straight to hell. The call came in two nights ago. You get a voicemail, <laughs> you hear your death, and then you die. Uh, Why? One missed call. Rated PG-13. Only in theaters January 4th. ESPN College Football, the Brody's Humanitarian Bowl, is brought to you by Brody's Truck Stops. The first ever G8 from Pontiac, the official performance machine of the NCAA. And Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? The Fresno State takes their first possession and scores in the beauty of the western edge of the Rockies and the Boise foothills, and it's been a beautiful game for Fresno State so far. 13-29 left in our third quarter, and they have been so impressive, James, on, on the offensive end. Very, very impressive. Uh, you got to give folks, folks some credit. They came out very well prepared, and uh, they've done some things scheme-wise that uh, have taken advantage of uh, Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech personnel. And Georgia Tech unable to take advantage of the field position after the penalty caused the kickoff way back in the 15-yard line but great coverage that time by the Fresno State special team now Paul Johnson there you see him at the Naval Academy had a tremendous run there a lot of people say you can't do well at the that's not my ringtone when the call goes straight to voicemail your world that's your voice goes straight to hell the call came in two nights ago you get a voicemail <laughs> you hear your death and then you die One missed call. Rated PG-13. Only in theaters January 4th. ESPN College Football, the Brody's Humanitarian Bowl, is brought to you by Brody's Truck Stops. The first ever G8 from Pontiac, the official performance machine of the NCAA. And Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? So Fresno State takes their first possession and scores in the beauty of the western edge of the Rockies and the Boise foothills, and it's been a beautiful game for Fresno State so far. 13-29 left in our third quarter, and they have been so impressive, James, on, on the offensive end. Very, very impressive. Uh, you got to give folks, folks some credit. They came out very well prepared, and uh, they've done some things scheme-wise that uh, have taken advantage of uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech personnel. And Georgia Tech unable to take advantage of the field position after the penalty caused the kickoff way back in the 15-yard line but great coverage that time by the Fresno State special team. Now Paul Johnson there you see him at the Naval Academy had a tremendous run there. A lot of people say you can't do well at the academies particularly at the Army and the Navy and Paul Johnson disproved that by winning there getting them the bowl games doing things like beating Notre Dame for the first time in 43 years. He's got a new job. He's the head coach at Georgia Tech named there on December the 7th. You see what he did at the Naval Academy. And also, the most important stat at the bottom, didn't lose any games to Army. Calvin Booker is the quarterback for Georgia Tech, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. And we talk about Paul Johnson because he's kind enough to join us. The new head coach of Georgia Tech, I guess, in about another 90 minutes or so is when you'll officially take over. Uh, what do you think of what you see here? Well, I think it's been a little disappointing for the guys out there. But, uh, you know, it's in a tough situation with uh, the way things have gone down. and. Uh, 
I'm sure they'll continue to play hard and fight hard. Now, why'd you decide to come here? Because there's going to be, uh, you think of Avery Roberson, by the way, who was injured and suffered what we think might have been a concussion, but uh, at least he's walking. Uh, why did you decide to come here? You could have stayed in Atlanta and, and kind of taken this in from a distance. Well, I just felt like it was important to come and show support for the players and, and not only the uh, guys who will be returning, but also the senior class. And, uh, you know, I flew in last night and uh, I've tried to stay out of the way the best I can. And, uh, you know, just just here to do whatever I can as a fan, really. Have you ever been in a situation like this where you've kind of walked in like and, and had to actually watch your team play a game that's not quite your team yet? No, this has been a little different the last uh, three or four weeks. Uh, you know, this game, watching Navy play was tough. and uh, But, uh, you know, I think that uh, this staff started the season and they needed to finish it. So it's uh, a situation that hopefully, uh, you know, in a, in a few minutes it'll be over and starting January 2nd, the team will be ours. That was Tyler Klutz who came in there and batted down uh, that pass by Calvin Booker. Coach, now I'm sure you have had a chance to evaluate your players in practice and you watched them a little bit on film. But what, do you, what, what are you trying to accomplish by coming out to Boise to watch the team play? Are you trying to evaluate your coaches, or are you trying to watch more players in game-like situations? Well, really, I'm just here, you know, more for support than anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, all these guys will have a clean slate with, with me and with our coaching staff, and we'll start over. Uh, you know, really just curious watching, seeing how they compete and, uh, and what they do. But uh, here for support more than anything else, really. Now, I know you led the country when you were at Navy and rushing at 348 yards. But the thing that I was most impressed with was fewest penalty yards as well. You were the, few, the, the least team, uh, least penalized team in the country. How do you get that message home to your players when it comes to penalties? Because I thought that was a key factor when Nesbitt came in the game. And they got those penalties. They were trying to run the ball, and they got behind it. I thought that's maybe perhaps something we'll see when you take over Georgia Tech. Guys cannot commit penalties, and that's key. Well, you can't stop yourself. It's a tough enough game when everybody's going in the right direction. But... Uh, you know, it's part of discipline and part of the thing. We'll try to talk about it, but I think a lot of the credit goes to uh, the guys who played at the Naval Academy. They're uh, certainly a good bunch and very disciplined, so you have to give them some credit for it as well. What you saw, by the way, is a heck of a play by Greg Smith to come back on a slightly underthrown football by Booker, who is under great pressure, and Georgia Tech moves into Bulldog territory. As James, we take a look here. This is coming back to the football taught right there. Yeah, way to attack the football there by the receiver, Greg Thomas there. I'm oh, sorry, Greg Smith actually on the catch. Well, Coach, what about the timeline for your staff? You're pretty close to naming one here, right? Well, we've got our staff pretty much in place. We'll get together. We'll have a first meeting on January 2nd, and we'll be announcing the staff, you know, by the end. And uh, the big push is just to kind of get organized and be able to hit the road going uh, full speed for recruiting and, and try to make sure we catch up there. Now, I'm not going to ask about specifics of the staff, but do the current Georgia Tech coaches know their future right now? Oh, certainly. They've known for a while, and, uh, you know, there'll be a holdover, too. And, uh, but uh, they knew exactly where they stood shortly after I took the job. Have you had much contact with the players since you took the job? I've had a chance to meet with uh, several of the players individually that have stopped by the office for, you know, five or ten minute uh, increments, but uh, not like we will once we get started back. But we'll have them in on the 7th for a team meeting, and they'll get to meet the staff. And from that point on, uh, we'll be heavily involved. Coach, final question for you. We are very grateful for your time. I'm sure you've already heard, well, this offense won't work in the ACC and all this other stuff. What do you, what do you react to that? How do you react I to that? I just think it's funny. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we've played, uh, while I was at the Naval Academy, I think we played 26 or 28 BCS schools, and it worked well enough to average 30 points against them. So it's, uh, <laughs> and uh, I saw, I think, Air Force finally lost today, but doing something similar, they scored 36 against Cal. So yeah. I guess it won't work in the Pac-10 either. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're going to find out here shortly. Yeah, we will. Coach, thank you again for your time. Enjoy the rest of your stay here at Boise, and the best of luck at Georgia Tech. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate it. Paul Johnson, the soon-to-be head coach at Georgia Tech, and this is going to be something that will make him happy. Jonathan Dwyer with a touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. Well, that's a player, James, that you and I identified. You in particular saw him on tape months ago and said, this kid is special. Well, he's the heir apparent to Tashar Choice. You know, he had seven touchdowns this year, and uh, a, lot of team, a lot of people have him on their all-freshman all team. Uh, just a great job blocking up front. You know, all he had to do was just hit it, keep his pass low, and hold on to the football, and the rest is history. But you got to give credit to that offensive line unit, as well as to Mike Cox, the fullback, for doing a good job of clearing the lanes for him and making, allowing him to score the touchdown. Thank you.
Travis Bell making 136 consecutive PAT. Suddenly, Georgia Tech has a reason to feel good as they have gotten a little bit closer to the Bulldogs behind the all-ACC freshman performer, Jonathan Dwyer. Want healthier, happier kids? Talk to their school health teacher about taking soda and fruit punches that are high in sugar and low in nutrients out of the schools. Three glasses of milk, including flavored milk, give kids nine essential nutrients they need every day. It's one more step to better health. Have you had your three today? Milk, cheese, or yogurt, the healthy way, three a day of dairy. Tonight, leap into the new year on ESPN as this athlete attempts to fly farther than anyone else ever has. Live, watch the New Year's ball drop and at the stroke of midnight Eastern time, this man will attempt to jump a football field. End zone to end zone. New Year No Limits, tonight on ESPN, immediately following the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Buying a new home? Don't use the home builder's pool builder. Chances are the pool guy's paying a kickback, and that will cost you thousands. If you've been a victim, call the home builder and the pool builder and tell them you want the money back. If you're buying a new home, tell the builder you'll be shopping for a pool. Talk to several pool companies. Be certain your builder doesn't pay kickbacks. Don't use the home builder's pool builder. You'll pay too much. Get a car, get a truck, get an SUV for the very best deals you'll ever see. Get a car, get a truck, get an SUV for the Chapman family. While dealerships may come and go, serve the customers who know you'll drive away quite happily with a satisfaction guarantee. The dealership more people know at area code 480 8381235 Chapman 40 years or more. It's a simple telephone call you'll see for a car or truck or SUV. Right on baseline in Tempe, Chapman is the place to be. Jonathan Dwyer, 36-yard touchdown run. Georgia Tech had not scored since their opening drive, and they picked that one up there to 27-14. Fresno State leads Georgia Tech. That was a 13-point halftime edge for Fresno State. That stops a 27-0 run by the Bulldogs. Go ahead. You can say it stopped, it stopped the bleeding, basically. Scott Blair with a kickoff, and he hammers this one. Marlon Moore. Lost it, but the, about the only place you can fumble the football and get away with it, he did. Heather Cox, you have more on Avery Roberson's situation? Indeed, the injured Georgia Tech player has been escorted into the locker room and diagnosed with a severe concussion. He does have feelings in all his extremities. His mother, as well as other family members, came down from the stands and have escorted him as well into the locker room and are with him. He will remain in the locker room for the remainder of the game, but certainly good news for Georgia Tech fans and all football fans indeed. All right, Heather, thank you very much. And another Georgia Tech player, a little bit walking off kind of odd. That looks like Michael Johnson. And is Michael Johnson a starting defensive end for Georgia Tech. And he barely made it to the sidelines before yeah. the pain got to him there. So we'll try to follow up on that as well. You know, we, we've talked about on a couple other games we've done together. Tackling guys in the legs is critical. And uh, I, I really wish more coaches would emphasize that. You can turn on any NFL game on a Sunday and watch guys tackle running backs in their legs. And if you tackle guys low and in their legs, you don't take hits like that. You know, Brandstater took a hit right after that as Guyton came in. We'll make that Shane Bowen came in and just popped him. But pass completed. Brandstater is hung in there. He has not been sacked yet and almost got the first down on that pass. The one important stat that I think for Grand Stater that's most important all year long for him is he's only thrown five, five interceptions. Mm -hmm. uh, his numbers don't jump off the chart, but he protects the football, and that gives you a, chance, a team a chance to win. That was by Tapia, and another first down. Ward Daniels on the stop, but Fresno State, John Tanuma even said it. We can't stop him, and he was absolutely right. Yeah, you know, what I haven't seen with the Georgia Tech defense, no one's been able to block them one-on-one, -on -one. and today, Fresno State's just taking guys and just gluing right to that defense, and one guy's been able to block one other guy. And 
you usually don't see that with this type of defense, especially when you're getting 48 sacks. One-on-ones are usually won by Georgia Tech. Well, the total yards for Fresno State coming up close to 400. And that's way more than Georgia Tech normally allows. And Clifton Smith quick off the ball. Flag is down, though. So he got it into Georgia Tech territory, but let's see what the flag is all about. Big East officiating crew with us here in Boise. Well, Illegal formation against the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. It's a five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Well, we've talked about the Georgia Tech defense before the game, how confusing they are. Well, give a team a month to get ready for a game, and I yeah. guess they can figure it out because certainly the Bulldogs have. Yeah, yards rushing, and then most importantly, points. You know, <laughs> when it, when it, when you're holding a team down to 21, less than 21 points, you're giving your team a chance to win. But uh, unfortunately, today that. Just haven't been able to get it done. Now it wasn't like Fresno State came in here with a weak offense. They average over 32 points and over 400 yards total. So they know how to move the ball. But all the time in the world for Grant Stater, and he gets it to Pasco, and it's another Bulldogs first down. And now just going back to Georgia Tech, you know, things we talked about, we saw them do. In previous games, that their movement at the line of scrimmage, where guys are pretending like they're blitzing and been pulling out, and you're not seeing a lot of movement right now by that Georgia Tech defense. Guys are just lining up and virtually just standing, and it's a very easy read for for Brandstater. You're playing man to man. This crossing routes are a perfect uh, routes to run to defeat the, the man to man coverage. They're anticipating those type of man to man coverages, and they're running across the across the field, making it easy, making for easy throws for uh, Brandstein. That's Michael Johnson on his way to the Georgia Tech dressing room. <laughs> Pressure for the backside. But look at Brandstein. What did he do that well? And actually, on the tackle that time, Clifton Smith. Jason Crawley made the catch. Smith made the tackle. We go to Reese for an update. This is a Midway Home Entertainment Studio update, fellas. California and Air Force Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl. Justin Forsett went for 140 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and the sturdy Golden Bears, who stumbled down the stretch, finished on a high note, beating Air Force 42-36. You know, I, I, we, got, we got a chance to hear Paul Johnson talk a little bit about Air Force and what he's done in years past running his triple option. You know, I watched the Navy game in the Poinsettia Bowl uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I, the only thing that concerns me a little bit about that offense is when they get behind. They don't have an offense that if you get behind by 14 points in the latter part of the game, that they can strike right away, and it's so it almost works against you. Well, you are going to be recruiting different athletes to Georgia Tech than you do the Navy, though. You are. You are. That's going to be a little but, bit of a different thing. Your scheme is still what it is. Right. You know, you're still a, a running football team. And when you need to score, you know, when you need to go the length of the field in a short amount of time, your offense, your scheme is going to work against you. Georgia Tech playing without their starting end, Michael Johnson. Word is that Heather tells the sideline they're taking a look at Johnson's right shoulder. Throwback to Smith. Right with him is Gary Guy. Strong side linebacker last year. On the weak side now, the senior from Hinesville, Georgia. And Smith couldn't get rid of him. Well, and John Tenuta told him, he said, hey, Gary Guyton can run. He's not he's not a guy that can't go out in space and cover a guy. And here you see him run stride for stride with, with their best player in Clifton Smith. Good job by Gary Guyton. Didn't draw a penalty flag or anything. Just great job of mirroring the receiver and not getting the penalty. So third down and long for the Bulldogs. Brandstater, 21 of 26 for 271 and a touchdown pass. I will say this, that Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, who's formerly of the Oakland Raiders, has done a fantastic job of developing and learning what Brandstater can do and what he can do and not ask him to do more than that. Look at Pasco leading the blocks. Touchdown! Well, you know, I was, I, I always said, but 39 catches, Bear Pasco only has 39 catches. How is he whack first team player, uh, you know, play, players uh, in the whack? First team uh, uh, tight end. Well, you know why? Because a guy can do more than just catch the football. He does a great job of blocking. You saw an example of it there. Well, Brandstater also deserves credit, obviously, for the run. But once he 
got into the open. Pasco had a chance on DJ Jones and took him out. Brand Stater used the block, made a couple of clever moves, and another touchdown for Fresno State. Another PAT and a flag in. Well, it's gonna be rough. it's gonna be rough in the kicker. Looks like that was Morgan Burnett who got in there. Let's see if this is gonna be the five or the uh, the 15. And Pat Hill is gonna get the choice if he wants to do it on the kickoff. I think he's already made that decision. But I tell you one thing, Brand Stater has done such a nice job when flushed out of the pocket. Running into the kicker on the defense. That penalty's declined. Points are good. He just wants the football. Let's get out here and move it along. So Tom Brandstater having a big day in the air and now on the ground. Rose Bowl game presented by City, Illinois versus USC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. You hear car, and what comes to mind? Okay, that's not car, and it's not two tons of metal, glass, and rubber. Car, the reason you got your license in the first place. The way you felt about your first car. It makes a kid pick up a crayon, and toy companies make these out of one of these. Car is why we'll stop for a chase seat. Or go just to go. It's back seats and rear wheel drive. Car is passion, emotion, and yes, even a little vanity. Because unlike other vehicles, car is all about you. And car is what makes a Pontiac a Pontiac. Whether it's the Solstice GXP, G6 GXP Coupe, we're coming this spring, the first ever Pontiac G8 GT, the most powerful car under 30 grand. I'm Mr. T, and this is my Night Elf Mohawk. Cut, T, there's no such thing as a Night Elf Mohawk. Shut up, fool! Like I was saying, my Mohawk storms through mighty forests on his frost saber. My Mohawk... T, it's a warrior, not a Mohawk. Well, maybe Mr. T hacked the game and created a Mohawk class. Maybe Mr. T is pretty handy with computers. Had that occurred to you, Mr. Condescending Director? I'm Mr. T, and I'm a Night Elf Mohawk. What's your game? World of Warcraft. Try it for free at Warcraft.com. Rated T for T. Oh, I have the worst cold. Here, yeah, take some NyQuil. It'll relieve your symptoms to help you sleep. Huh? Yeah, you'll sleep like a bit. You'll sleep like a little lay. Like. Sleep like you did before the rooster went blind. NyQuil. I'll take that. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching fever, best sleep you ever got with a cold medicine. For daytime symptoms, try DayQuil. Tom Brandstater coming off of a big scramble for the touchdown. 35 yards on that one. Big block down the field by Bear Pasco. Fresno State came into this game outscoring their opponents 108 to 37 in the third quarter, and they're outscoring Georgia Tech 14 to 7 here at the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. So Georgia Tech trying to light a fire here with Evans, and that does not work as we get an update on the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl and go to Reese Davis. Hey, thanks for getting that sponsor in for me. Saves me a little bit of time. Kentucky and Florida State. Cats have a 7-0 lead thanks to Andre Woodson's 37th touchdown pass of the year. Jacob Tammy catching it. The Seminoles depleted and down by a touch. Reese, we're only here to serve you. You know that. Fresno State up by 20. All right, let's make you the offensive coordinator. Let's make you John Bond here for... Georgia Tech, what do you do here now? You've got Calvin Booker in again at quarterback, his second series. Do you get it to choice now, or do you just start throwing it like crazy? And that pass dropped by Damon Jenkins. Meantime, some of the Georgia Tech offensive linemen frantically waving for some help as one of their players is down. We can't quite see the number clearly from the press box. Now we can. That's A.J. Smith. And, then, and then that happened within moments of the snap. Yeah. This is unfortunately the second time the Yellow Jackets have had a player in that kind of motionless position with Avery Roberson. 
He's 53. Looks like he just gets his head down him just a tad bit there and gets turned. Blocking Charles Tolbert, the nose tackle. Hmm. Took a little bit of a delayed reaction. I can't really tell exactly what took place. Yeah, it wasn't. He's up, though. So it might have been a back issue. You looked at that and... Also walking off a little unsteadily, but again, we're just so grateful that yeah. he walked off the field. By the way, I wanted to ask, and, and Heather Cox checked on this for us, about Taylor Bennett, whether or not he was healthy. He's fine. Heather says there's no injury to report on Taylor Bennett, so Calvin Booker's just in the game, the third quarterback that Georgia Tech has used today. Now, he is a junior, so you really do think this is turning into the audition phase of our game here, huh? Well, you know, I'll be interested to see who's on the coaching staff after the game, put it that way, because... I really don't understand, you know, how these guys, these quarterbacks, are able to get this many reps in practice because you can only give out so many reps on only a certain number of guys know what the heck's going on out there. So I'm just curious why Taylor Bennett's not playing, and if he's not playing, why they're not going back to Josh Nesbitt. Well, Calvin Booker getting some chances. He threw only six passes during the season, completed four of them. That one there completed to Mike Cox. I mean, it may very well may be a case where John Tenuto wants Paul Johnson to see his roster to see what he's got. He's trying to show him his players. Well, remember the comment that Paul Johnson made when he was up here, James, said there are going to be some holdovers on the staff. Yeah. And we don't know who that's going to be. Obviously, we didn't think he was going to tell us, and he didn't. Well, for whatever it's worth, and, and the number of injuries that they've sustained this year and the issues that they've had with trying to find guys to plug in certain spots, I certainly would think a guy like John Bond would be a, a guy that they consider keeping. I mean, he's He's, he's, done some, he's done some good things with this offense. That's Greg Smith getting the first down for the Yellow Jackets. But the problem isn't necessarily been completely with the Yellow Jacket offense. It's been their defense. And that's the one thing that is so surprising well, in this about game. this game. Yeah, in, in this, this game. game. I'm talking about during the year, you know, you lose to Shard Choice for the Virginia game. You lose him for the Boston College game. I mean, he is a... He is a vital part of that offense, and when he went down, they struggled offensively. That's uh, Jonathan Dwyer who took the direct snap. A reminder, we want you to help decide the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. Vote at ESPN.com. Search Pontiac to determine which school will win the $100,000 General Scholarship Fund contribution courtesy of Pontiac. There are your choices. Now, James, who would you vote for, or what would you vote for there? Well, I'd, I'd like the Trinity um, multiple laterals. I, I thought that was just a phenomenal uh, way to end the game. I'm uh, going to go with number one there, Appalachian State, right there, I think. Yeah, I know you would, but I'm going to go with Trinity. I'm going to go with Trinity. I'm, I'm going to go with Trinity because you can't even practice that play. No, of course. Th there's virtually no way to practice that play in men and, and be successful. I mean, you just have to be very, very fortunate. It was Marcus Riley who just stuffed the direct snap to Dwyer again. Riley, the senior from Sacramento, the WAC defensive player of the year. Very, very good player as well. Very good player. They list him at 6'2", 220. He might actually be nah. a little lighter than nah. that, a little shorter than that, but he plays, yeah. doesn't seem to bother him. No, Marcus Riley plays big. I don't care what he, how tall he is or how much he weighs. That guy plays big. It got deep in the secondary. That's James Johnson and a first down for Georgia Tech. He's out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Well, they, they're looking like they're... Fresno State looks as if they're starting to sub down now because uh, they have guys out there on the field that normally don't play. And uh, it looks like they're putting some newer guys in just to give them some play in time, get some bowl experience. In that particular instance, your, your guy is covered. Corner's covering short. You should be playing deep in that can't play that kind of defense and, and be successful. Now, not to hang him out, but that is a freshman playing corner, Sherrod Davis, and it was Marvin Haynes, a free safety, starting free safety, who shoved him out of down. Deep to short, Sherrod. Deep to short. Got to be deep to short in every cover. Again, direct snap, and Choice got bumped into his own guy and slowed him down, but he got very close to the marker. Jamal Evans, pardon me, on the yeah, carry. He hasn't yeah. seen much. You know what? I don't think Sherrod Choice has seen the field in this quarter. Surprising. Surprising. His last college football game, uh, 
at least with Georgia Tech anyway, and uh, surprised that he's not out there. Well, you'll see him on Sundays. There's no doubt about no that. No doubt about it. Well, you mentioned, though, one of the things with Georgia Tech, some of their fans feel that they underachieved this year. Four and four in the ACC, seven and five overall, although they do have 11 straight winning seasons of seven wins or more, but some feel they didn't live up to expectations. But you know what? The short choice was rarely healthy this season. You wonder what it would have been like if he had been. Yeah, didn't play in three games or played in parts of three games and he missed some of the uh, games. It's a short choice. Still rushed over 1,300 yards. Yep. That's a big, that's a big, big deal in the ACC. John Munger getting in there again Riley in there again Manga's played a great game for Fresno State Riley Marvin Hanks and that Bulldogs defense stiffening there bringing up third down and about four now let's be honest that losing the Georgians you can't do it you, you, you have to beat Georgia and uh the fact that Chan Gailey never beat Georgia was a big factor. Well, I think it's ironic. You have Chan Gailey 0-6 versus the Bulldogs. Here comes Paul Johnson 6-0 versus Army while he was in Navy. That was a risky pass, and it worked! I'm amazed that didn't get picked off to Marius Thomas on that catch, and they're inside the five. Well, great job by Ben Jacobs understanding that, okay, now we're down near the end zone. I can't tackle the guy low because they'll go over the top. He hits him in his hits him in his shoulder and knocks him sideways. And you see him scramble and now to his to his left. Sherrod Davis does not want to take a chance like that on trying to on, on knocking the ball down. You want to go to the receiver. Mm -hmm. and, and if you miss the ball, you can make the tackle. But when you come underneath, you gotta be make you have to make absolutely sure that you can intercept the pass. Poor decision on Sherrod's part. Great catch by Smith on, on Smith's behalf. Well, nothing doing there for Jonathan Dwyer. Which is why that tackle by Ben Jacobs was such a big hit. Big play for them because you give, your, you give your defense a chance to line up and play again. Kind of an awkward handoff, too. Uh, Booker looked like he may have been bumped, and that didn't make it very easy for Dwyer. Again, you know, Booker and Dwyer aren't working together in practice very much this last couple of weeks because, that, you know, you have to start choice back then. You got Taylor Bennett and Evan getting reps in practice. So those things are to be expected. But Booker trying to get to the edge. Well, we know why Sherrod Davis oh, makes this man. team because oh, man. you saw it. Now, I'm going to tell you, Sherrod Davis was very fortunate right there. How so? Because you are, as a secondary player, you have pass first, run second. And Sherrod had a man behind him that was wide open. All Cook had to do was throw it over his head, there would have been a touchdown. But the coach always said, if you're going to be wrong, go 100%. <laughs> and Sherrod Davis is going 100% in the wrong direction. Good for him. Very nice hit. Against Davis, flag. Did he interfere, James? I don't think so. I don't. Face guarding is not pass interference. I think a lot of times the back judges have that rule backwards. Now, if he hits, has if he draws contact, it's pass interference. But if he just face guards him, as we saw Gary Guyton do on Clifton Smith here on the other end of the uh, field, then it's not pass interference. Pass interference. Defense. Tony places the ball at the two-yard line. Down. You don't have to play the ball as long as you don't draw contact. Now, he had his hands on him. That is pass interference. If he's just face guarding him, yeah, if he has his, he, he's got his hand on him there and a shoulder pad. You can't do that. That's clearly pass interference. Gary Guyton's situation never drew contact so it was not pass interference. Good call. Get a good look again. That's his second touchdown of this quarter. Wow. I think we see the future for Georgia Tech and Jonathan Dwyer. Yeah, there's little doubt about that. Yeah. An option for playing for a coach who wants to run the football. Jonathan Dwyer definitely <laughs> has a future. We know Jonathan's not going anywhere. No, that's his ninth touchdown of the year. Yeah. Came in with seven. He had a big run. Now a short one. Well, he rushed for 138 yards this year versus Stanford, which, you know, a lot of people didn't expect from a true freshman. So, you know, he has the capabilities to get it done. 
and 137 consecutive PATs for Travis Bell. Well, we can't wait. January 1st, game we are all excited about. The granddaddy of them all, the way it was meant to be. Pac-10 versus Big Ten, the mighty Trojans of USC, the fighting Illini of Illinois. From the Tournament of Roses Parade to the game's final play, all the tradition, pageantry, and excitement of the Rose Bowl game, presented by City, tomorrow on ABC. I like that, the way it was meant to be. I'm old-fashioned, man. I like my conference tie-ins, and uh, I like the bowl system. Uh, gives us a lot to talk about. And this game will give us a lot to talk about, too. Illinois and SC. Uh, you talked about it. It seems like USC is in this game every year. Certainly 32 Rose Bowl appearances says it all. Certainly not the case for the Illini. First in since 1984. Well, there were some that felt Georgia should have been in this bowl game. Uh, you know what? They like to keep it the Big Ten versus the Pac-10. And I, I think there's something about history allowing it to remain the same. And listen, I think you've got some fascinating matchups. Hawaii and Georgia being the one that is so unusual. Getting Hawaii all the way to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that gives Pat Hill some hope, thinking that a whack team can do it. Boise State did it. Hawaii has done it. Why not Fresno State? Well, and I have to admit, I, 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 I disagree with Pat Coach Hill because I said, listen, Coach, Hawaii didn't have the strongest the strongest opponents this year. They, they played some teams that probably weren't, uh, you know, comparable to what Fresno State's played in the past. But yet they're playing in a BCS bowl game. Why wouldn't you adopt that same philosophy said teams won't play us well that's that is a good yeah. point and you know pat hill likes to schedule tough and he's done it again coming up next year they're going to play wisconsin uh yeah. they're going out to play at toledo they've got some very difficult games very few home games it's not a schedule and set up to get to 11 or 12 and 0. you know he, he said look some schools are going to take some of those lighter games against the uh what we used to call one double a teams bowl championship series teams they call them now uh, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play my way. So when I go to bed at night, I feel like I've done the right thing. Right. And you have to give him credit for not compromising. You take a look at their schedule for next year. And obviously, we, we know they're going to play back opponents. We just don't know the exact dates. But look at that. You're going to start at UCLA. They're going to be all fired up because you got Rick Neuheisel. Yep. Kansas State, not a bargain with Ron Prince there. Wisconsin, come on now. Now, they've been to Madison, by the way, and given them a real headache. And Toledo is never, ever an easy road trip. So he won't back down from that philosophy. It has worked for him, maybe not to the BCS level, but it has worked. And you know what? <laughs> He's got 35 players in the National Football League in the last seven years, so who am I to say? And Brad Stater continues to throw the darts. That one is dropped to go down for more. And Heather Cox. Yeah, certainly not what you want to hear in a bowl game for Georgia Tech. A lot of injuries to report on. If you're wondering about running back to Shard Choice, he went into the locker room briefly to have his left knee evaluated. The same knee he had surgery on earlier in the season. His return is questionable, and you got to wonder with the way freshman Jonathan Dwyer is playing if he'll come back. Also, tight end Colin Peak out with the ankle. Michael Johnson out with the shoulder. And offensive tackle A.J. Smith has been fitted with a brace over his right elbow to help range of motion his return is questionable i'm not sure if a lot of georgia tech fans can see their sideline but those guys are not quitting at all i can tell you that right now the georgia tech players are into this ball game and they really believe they have a chance to win this game and they do well, I'll tell you what, they brought the pressure that time. Brand Stater felt it, and it may have affected his throw a little bit. So Georgia Tech is going to continue to do what they do, what has served their defense well, although not so much today as Fresno State has racked up an obscene amount of yardage, over 540 yeah. yards so far, and we still have an entire fourth quarter to go. Well, that's the key. They, the Georgia Tech knows they still have the fourth quarter to go, and uh, it's good to see a guy like Deshard Choice out there regardless if he's injured or not he's still trying to move on his teammates that's impressive only the second punt for kyle zimmerman tyler evans in the punt formation look out here here we go that's all it takes georgia tech will wind up with the football joe gaston falls on it you could see it on that sideline those guys have all fight that you want to see in a football team they're not giving up dj donnelly came in to block it impressive well it's so funny because the reputations here we'll take a look at dj donnelly 28 
DJ, good job of getting his hands on the football. A lot of times guys will jump up in the air and try to catch the ball like they're going to go up and catch midair. You can't do it. You got to get it right off the guy's foot. Great job. Now, fumble recoveries are another another skill that a lot of guys fail to realize. That you can't jump on top of the ball. You got to slide in there like a second baseman. Like you slide into second base. You got to get down on that joker. How about that penetration that time by Charles Tolbert, who almost was able to steal the ball from Calvin Booker before he was able to throw the interception. A tremendous play by Tolbert. Now, it looks like they still have their starters in there on the offensive line, so there shouldn't be that type of penetration. Real surprising to see that type of penetration. Well, you've lost one in A.J. Smith, but that's in the tackle position. That right, was right up right, the gut. Right, that's right up the gut. That's, I mean, you've got some guys right up front that have started a whole bunch of ball games. Dwyer, but he has a hole. The foot race oh, shoved he, out of bounds. Boy, a touchdown saving shove by Marvin Hayes. You know, they, they say sometimes running backs run angry. Jonathan Dwyer was just like the Shard choice. Angry. Left side of that line for Georgia Tech getting it done, too. I mean, he comes through. Look at that hole. Good job. And watch him use a stiff arm. Not a lot of guys use the stiff arm. Use that, use that arm as a weapon to keep guys off you. You got a good look at 64. Andrew Gardner, the first team all acc -er, who's got some potential NFL aspirations. He's got some feelers out, but does expect to return to Georgia Tech next season. And I guarantee you, Paul Johnson wants it. They go right, and Dwyer, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia, continuing to roll through, and Georgia Tech is certainly in this game in the final second of the third quarter. Well, Capital One Bowl Week featuring over 20 bowl games in 12 days on the ESPN family of networks. Continues tonight, New Year's Eve at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The 15th-ranked Clemson Tigers, led by their dual running threat of James Davis and C.J. Spiller, they got the 23rd-ranked Auburn Tigers in the Chick-fil-A Bowl from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. That ought to be fun. That's well, did great, you see uh, Francis the Cat this morning on first take? I did. Did you see what Francis picked? <laughs> Francis likes the Tigers. That's right. <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> Jamal Evans says, wait a minute. All these holes were there for Jonathan Dwyer. How come I didn't get one? That is the end of three. One more to go on the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. Georgia Tech is back in this game after a block punt. No Limits, tonight on ESPN. He said, like, why don't you take Samantha? But then Susie was all like, no, you can't do that because, Dad, this is really old mutual. Bridge or tunnel? Bridge, please. It's much more old mutual this time of day. I want you to focus on one thing and one thing only. Protect the old mutual. You got that? May sound strange now, but with our new thinking about your financial future, it won't for long. It's completely old mutual. If you say so. I was pretty nervous, uh, apprehensive. Uh. It was tough to tell him I was joining the Army at first. I uh, did research on my own, tried to get an idea about what the Army was going to be like. It's given me a whole bunch of confidence. But no, I'm, I'm very proud of him. He's just a stronger, more driven individual. He could outrun me. <laughs> if your son or daughter wants to talk about joining the Army, listen, you made them strong, we'll make them Army strong. Find out more at GoArmy.com. It's time for Lund Cadillac's annual holiday wreath and crest sale. You'll find great savings, especially on the few remaining 07 models that offer you 0% financing or cash back rebates and Lund dealer discounts of up to $15,000 in total savings. Don't forget, business owners, Section 179, the tax deduction on full-size SUVs, ends January 1st. Hurry in today to Lund, where we're number one because we make the best deals. 
Don't be fooled by big retailers offering 10, 20, even 30% off. Spencer's TV and Appliance sells for less every day. No one has more brands, more products, and more choices than Arizona's largest independent appliance dealer. Come in now for Christmas clearance savings on all Whirlpool products. Every range, oven, dishwasher, refrigerator, freezer, and every Whirlpool washer and dryer is on sale now. Plus, buy with no interest for 12 months. A happy New Year from Spencer's. Spencer's, it's like having a friend in the business. In Mesa, Glendale, North Scottsdale, Arrowhead, and Gilbert. Welcome back to the Roadies Humanitarian Bowl in Boise, Idaho. With James Hastie and Heather Cox, I'm Dave Lamont. Happy New Year to all of you. Hope you have a fabulous one and a safe one. Georgia Tech on the move as we have the first snap of the fourth quarter. And that was Dwyer picking up three more, giving him 67 yards and 10 carries coming off the bench with Shark Choice, as Heather mentioned earlier, nicked up a little bit again. Unfortunately, that has been kind of the story of a spectacular senior yeah. season for Choice. Unfortunately, yeah. That, in particular, if it's the same knee that he's injured during the, during the year. That's the one he had surgery on. That's the one that's bothering him. He's still got, I mean, that's what's so impressive to me about him. Still got 1,310 yards, 10 touchdowns, and made first team all ACC and is the first back since Thomas Jones of Virginia to win back to back ACC rushing titles that was actually literally last century yeah yeah and he's third all time uh, touchdowns for, for Georgia Tech that's impressive going for it here on fourth and short they tried a fourth down earlier didn't make it it's tough to tell Yes, he is. That was Calvin Booker who's taken over for Taylor Bennett. He was not injured. Well, they need to measure. This Big East crew wants a closer look. Now, you're getting a, he's getting an earful from Booker and the Fresno players. I mean, everybody's opinions divided down there. Yeah. You never win those arguments, though, do you? You never <laughs> win it. But you know what? Those chains don't lie. They had enough of a surge there by that offensive line, but it's going to be all about the spot. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> well, Calvin Booker is uh, 6'4", 245, and if he had been born a little shorter, he might not have made it. Yep. Again, I just... Fresno State has to realize that Calvin Booker only knows or has worked on so many plays and practices last couple of weeks. And so they have to understand if Jonathan Dwyer's in the backfield, there's a good chance he's getting the football. Well, I guess they figured it out. I think Fresno State and Marcus Riley had figured that one out also. No doubt about that. And Booker's thrown the ball fairly well. He's five out of eight for 84 yards, but Dwyer has come on and played very well with two touchdowns for Georgia Tech, but he lost four there. Yeah, and you know what's impressive about Marcus Riley is 123 tackles, and yet their defense is 96 in the country in rush defense. This yeah, that was the thing. They were giving up 183 rush yards this season. They've given up 169, so they're in character, but they've made some big plays, and Riley certainly the leader of that category. With a defender at his ankles, that pass out of the end zone. At his ankles was Trevor Shambly making it a little bit uncomfortable for Booker. Well, and, and Booker, as he dropped back, he, he never really looked off the safety. He looked right now to the tight end, which pretty much everybody, linebackers included, all got to just cover the tight end on that play. He tried to look him off, but he didn't do a good job of it, and he never sold the fake to the, the look off to the, to the secondary and the linebackers. Ramblin' Rick, 8 out of 13 on first down. They take out the fullback, Cox. Austin Barrick, 85, is in the game at tight end. He was the player that last pass was intended for. And a timeout for Calvin Booker. See, now that's an example of a guy timeout. not getting a lot of practice. Georgia Tech. Not, getting a, not, getting, of not getting a lot of reps in practice. Find out if this timeout will pay off. Rose Bowl game presented by City, Illinois versus USC, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC.
With over 350 locations in 45 states, whatever your destination, there's a Roadies along the way. Roadies, your hometown truck stops. I saw this in the window and thought it was so old mutual. I just had to try it, it on. It is so old mutual. Dude, I think we just achieved old mutual. Can you believe Johnson got that promotion? I mean, what makes him so old mutual? He is married to Crenshaw's daughter. May sound strange now, but with our new thinking about your financial future, it won't for long. Houston, we are go for all mutual. My 99 Lincolns, you've been overlooked. Forgotten in couches, tossed carelessly in the fountains. You think you're worthless, but to me, you are a hot, juicy stack attack. Together, united, you are 99. It's wrong to spend your pennies on just anything when you're hungry. Attack your hunger with a new hot, juicy stack attack from Wendy's. Made with two fresh, never frozen beef patties stacked with cheese. There's no better double cheeseburger out there for only 99 cents. You gotta taste this. Only at Wendy's. That's right. You get a voicemail? You hear your death, and then you die. Call came in two nights ago. Everybody seems to be linked together somehow. I'm gonna be next. The girls need protection. One missed call. Ready PG-13, only in theaters January 4th. It looks like something you'd like to get into a big tube and just slide down. Here in Boise, the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl from the ACC Georgia Tech from the WAC Fresno State. Here in Bronco Stadium on the Boise State campus, I'm Dave Lamont with James Hastie and Heather Cox. There's one thing I want to correct, one thing, 442 total yards for Fresno State. Earlier I said 542, but I did not take a lot of math courses <laughs> when studying to be a broadcaster, so that'll happen. Now, third down and 14, Calvin Booker, the quarterback at the moment for Georgia Tech. He may end up finishing this game. Uh, Josh Nesbitt played a little bit, kind of an audition. Yep. Taylor Bennett, I wonder what he's thinking right now. Started the game, did not play badly at all. But he's trying to figure out what he did wrong. That's what he's trying to figure out. Trying to figure out what he's going to do next season with a new coach coming in. Well, tied in a little early because he knew he was getting the ball. <laughs> False start, 85 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. And that is Austin Barrick. Again, in for Colin Peake, who has left this game with an injury. It's been a tough day for Georgia Tech physically, as Heather yeah. reported several players out. Avery Roberson knocked unconscious during the game. He is out. Looks like they've lost A.J. Smith, Colin Peak on the offensive end. Those two players probably not be back. And Tashar Choice also nicked up, and we haven't seen much of him in the second half. like a punt. Oh, and it's a touchdown! Unbelievable! <laughs> DJ Donnelly! Oh my goodness. You know, did you say it looked like a punt? Yes, I did. Because yeah, it did look like a punt. Yeah. Well, DJ Donnelly has blocked the punt and now makes that catch. I, I mean, you as a defensive lineman, your job is to keep the quarterback in the pocket. They do a great job of that. Now all the secondary needs to do is go up and attack the football and not try to intercept it. And guys get tangled up. 138 in a row for Travis Bell. We have ourselves a new game thanks to a play that is not just the way they drew it up. I love beer. I drink beer daily on taste panel here at the brewery. This isn't like other beer companies. Everyone in here, I've known how to brew. We're a company of beer geeks. Y'all have yourself a good weekend. Samuel Adams employees, from the head of the legal department to the newest sales rep that we hire, learns how to brew beer. You need passion. You have to actually believe in what you're doing. That's why I'm here. I, I love beer. Sam Adams tastes great because happy employees make better beer. Yeah, that's a... uh, hey, love my job. Driving without car insurance can turn any road into a crime scene. 
because when you drive without car insurance, you're breaking the law. But Safe Auto can help. I was in a bind and needed proof of insurance quick. I asked, Safe Auto faxed. I had to verify my coverage at 2 in the morning. And thanks to Safe Auto, I did. Don't break the law. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and get immediate coverage today. 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Safe-AUTO. Hey, Riley, what's up? Yeah. I just dumped Quest. Cox Telephone is $10 a month plus for the same features. I know. We've had Cox Telephone for years. It's great. Hold on, I got another call. Hello? No, okay. Mom. Dad's bringing home dinner from that new Chinese place. Oh, cool. They have the best lettuce wraps and the hottest waiters. Really? What else haven't you told me? I'm saving $17 a month with the Cox Bundle. Call 623-594-1147. ESPN College Football, the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl, is brought to you Rhodes Truck Stops and Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Be a little twisted. Good look at the natural beauty of Idaho and a good look at Calvin Booker, the quarterback du jour, I guess, or at least for the for the half for Georgia Tech. And he got away with one there, James. Yeah, probably should have threw that one away or took it, tuck it and ran with it. But, uh, you know, get credit to, get credit to DJ Donnelly for going up and just making a heck of a play. He's a 6'4", 215. This is Clifton Smith. They're waiting for Batman to erupt. And he's smacked down to the turf after about a 14-yard return. Good solid hit that time by Troy Garside for Georgia Tech. All right, now here's a real challenge. The first time that Fresno State has had Georgia Tech, they actually feel the breath on the back of their neck for a long time. Fresno State had a stretch of this game, the second and, uh, quarter in particular, but they absolutely dominated. It's right. not the same case right. now. No, it's not the same case. And I still wonder about John Tenuta being on the sideline as opposed to being in the booth. Now, we know because he's the, the, the interim acting head coach that he has to be on the sideline, but he hasn't been on the sideline in over 25 years, and I just wonder what that effect is having on his defensive play calling right now. Well, at the moment, nothing, because that play went nowhere for Fresno State. His defense rose up. Shane Bowen getting in there, the sophomore from Pickerington, Ohio. He's played a solid game for the Yellow Jackets. Very little gain, maybe a yard for Fresno State. Well, this would be the series where you really want to see a defense step up because they can stop them here and get off the field. That momentum starts to shift now back to the Georgia Tech bench. But continuing to move a good solid tackle. What a picture-perfect tackle by Morgan Burnett. Well, we saw Morgan Burnett make some mistakes in this ball game, but we we see some we see that type, those types of plays are plays why he's been named all freshmen on certain teams, certain publications because that's a heck of a job coming up, breaking down, using the sideline, buzzing his feet to make a good solid tackle. For Brandstater, James, that's a career high in pass completions with 22. I know, and you really want me to understand that that guy's having a great game today. You don't think he is? I think he's having an outstanding game. Okay. But I think Clifton Smith is having a great game as well. And again, avoiding the rush, he had one 35-yard touchdown run. This one not as spectacular, but most importantly, Bulldogs keep the football. Grand Stater's doing a great job, which is something I haven't seen from him, of extending the play with his legs. And he's, you know, that's very demoralizing to a defense to see a quarterback running behind you as a guy in coverage, see him break the line of scrimmage and pick up a first down. And just, I man, you, 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 your hands are on your, your, your hips and you're trying to get your, catch your breath. And next thing you know, this guy's taking down off down the field on you again. There's Smith, and Georgia Tech brings him down after a four-yard gain. Heather Cox, you have a story of great emotional importance to this Georgia Tech football team. The entire Georgia Tech team is seen wearing these orange Sherlock Foundation wristbands to honor Georgia Tech student Sarah Keen, who's battling leukemia. Unfortunately, she's taken a turn for the worse. It remains over the holidays in Atlanta Hospital and is watching from there, and we certainly say hello. Now, DJ Jones, one of the players for Georgia Tech, has 
we developed quite a friendship with Sarah. In fact, the entire football team hosted a fundraiser to raise money for the Sherlock Foundation. DJ texts Sarah or calls her nearly every day and said, I'm going to cover my entire arm and wristbands to keep it warm today, Sarah. Clifton Smith with a first down. Thank you very much, Heather. And certainly we want to wish Sarah the very best from all of us here in the ESPN crew. Philip Wheeler, whose name just hasn't been called enough if you're a Georgia Tech fan, in on that tackle. But it is another first down for the Bulldogs. Good run by here, here by Clifton Smith. Trying to find that cutback lane. 5'8", 190, but has incredible vision in place bigger than he is. Give credit to deep Philip Wheeler, though, because if he misses that tackle, Batman is gone. Yeah, it was Smith's speed, no question. 10 carries, 77 yards, so almost eight yards of rush for this very talented senior from Fresno. And this is more of the personality of Fresno that you've come to learn over the years. Anthony Harding straight ahead. Well, it's very clear now Pat Hill's going back to what he established early on in the ball game, which is we're going to take our guys, but one on one with your guys, and whichever guy wins is going to be the better guy for it. So that's what I think that's what you're seeing right now. Look at the offensive line just turning their guys and walling them off. I remember seeing Logan Mankin doing this this past Sunday for the New England Patriots, uh, New, New England Patriots on the New York Giants this past Sunday. Yeah, he's a Fresno State product. Pat Hill stays in touch. He's very proud of his three guys who are on the Patriots. As well he should be. Brad Stater looking deep for the end zone, throwing it into coverage, and flag is down. But that's back at the 35-yard line, not in the end zone. And Brad Stater slow getting up. He took the hardest hit he has taken all game, and really feeling that one a little bit. Well, it's probably the hardest one he's felt all game because they haven't Holding hit him very much. 73 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. That's Kenny Avon. And Yabi was getting the uh, pressure in there. You know, they ran this They ran this play earlier. Here we're going to see the holding call right there. Yeah, the worst thing that happened to Kenny is he did that out in space, too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Vance Walker does a good job of getting a hit on there. Just want to keep his head up. I'm sorry, Daryl Roberson wants to keep his head up there on that attack on that hit. They try a little misdirection with Smith, and he's going to make it up as he goes along. And look at the ad lib ability of Clifton Smith at the speed and a first down. It was second and 16. He got 16 and a little bit more. Just the ability to change on the stop of a stop of a dime is impressive by Clifton Smith. I mean, the vision that he has to understand where he needs to go on the cutback lanes, which which lanes are available to him, are incredible. 58190. The guy runs hard like he weighs over 200 pounds. It's impressive. All right, now here's the senior. Not a very big back, but what about a pro future? Oh, yeah, definitely can play at, at the next level because he can do so many things. He can return punts. He can play special teams. He can go out on as a, and, a, and be a flyer on punt team. He can come in and be a good third down back for you. So he's very versatile. And he can take a hit, and he took one that time. You know, I had a good talk with a friend of mine's uh, we were talking about Reggie Bush and the fact that Reggie won't go to the Pro Bowl in our guess and our estimation as a running back. But if he could ever accept the fact of the role of being a punt returner or a kickoff returner, he could have a chance to go to Hawaii. But you got to have guys like Clifton Smith that accept their role and saying, OK, I'm not going to be an every down back. I'm not going to be a, a, a guy that's going to catch a lot of balls, but I'm going to do all these things and, and accept being able to do all those And a direct snap at the Smith, and he's going to throw to the end zone and miss. But why not? They're wrong with that idea. Clifton Smith on the pass. That might have changed your uh, vote, wouldn't it? If you'd have completed that touchdown pass, you might have changed your vote. I don't have the paper anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the MVP for the game as voted on by the media covering the game. We also have our own player of the game to name later. We only get one of those, the Capital One player of the game. Here at the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. He's James Hasty. I'm Dave Lamont. Heather Cox is on the field. Absolutely gorgeous weather here. It's in the mid-20s. Sunshine everywhere. Just an absolutely pretty setting here at Bronco Stadium. Yeah. Undergoing a major renovation here. They're adding luxury suites and a new press box for next season here in Boise. 
Oh, nice throw. Marlon Moore nice on the throw. catch. Good and another first down. Yeah, good job by Marlon Moore and, and Brandstetter. Two guys have been working together all year long, and you can see the timing that they've been working on is really, really honed in right now. Well, here's the other thing. If you're Georgia Tech, we had talked, and you made a comment going into a break once about momentum belonging to the Bulldogs. You see me to Georgia Tech, and it seems like that has just been yanked out from under them going the other way on this drive. Going back the other way, you're right. And it's, uh, well, it's a crazy thing what momentum can do. I mean, it's a, confidence is 99% of this game is all about confidence. That's Harding here with the football. Trying to get to the edge, and he'll get out of bounds instead, which certainly helps Georgia Tech. Jamal Lewis ran him out, and a flag. Yeah, Jamal just got to know he, he can't make those kind of dumb mistakes. Now, Hardy may have fell down on his own, but he got a little help. Well, that's not... Ball. Personal foul. Number four on the defense. Lays it out of bounds. That only be half the distance, automatic first down. You know, here's the situation. You've got the, you got the guy, you got him in control. Just ride him on out of bounds and just let up. Just let up. Well, I'll tell you what, John Tenuta and his staff not at all happy about that call. I would have left the flag in the pocket, but I'm not a paid official. First and goal. That's Marlon Moore showing a little shake and bake move. The ball is down. Georgia Tech has it at the one. Well, I like the idea of trying to get Marlon Moore involved, but when you get inside the red zone, you want to give that ball to your guys that have been that carried you the, the distance to the, through the season. Lanye Miller and Clifton Smith should, should be the guys that run the football down here. There you see the strip. We couldn't see the arm, and right in the hands of Daryl Richard, who recovers it for the Yellow Jackets. Well, never mind that comment about momentum. Now, 99 yards away. Let's see who the quarterback's going to be for Tech, and it's going to be Booker. I guess he really can't ask Taylor Bennett to come in now after having not played in the quarter at all, in this half at all. Yeah, they had another Georgia Tech player injured on the, in that series. And that has been, unfortunately been a common theme with the Yellow Jackets in this game. That's a risky throw, and it's out of bounds. All I could think of is that the, it looks like Jenkins was the DB there. If he had picked that, he could walk in the end zone backwards. Yeah, tough call. To, real risky to call a bootleg down here in the end zone. Very, very tough. But Calvin Booker has good speed. He's a guy that transferred from Auburn. He has good size on him, good strong arm. Just a little off target, that play. Let's see if perhaps Jonathan Dwyer gets a shot here. Usually after a pass like that, you have to run the ball. You have to. <laughs> Defense will be pinning their ears back right now. There you go. Well, they got him. Barely get out the end zone. And that is still waiting for the call. One official has him outside the end zone. The line judge came in. There's a rhythm that every coordinator has. Every coordinator has a certain rhythm. He, he's not going to want to come back and run a pass back to back because he doesn't want to put himself in third and long. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. But you can best believe Pat Hill knew, knows about that rhythm that every coordinator has. And this is going to be reviewed. This will be reviewed. There was a little hole. Ed Dwyer maybe had a chance to hit it a little more quickly, but it closed. You know, so they had 10 men in the line, in the box. There yeah. was absolutely no way they were going to be able to run that ball. And again, it goes back to the to the fact that they threw the ball on first down. Now Pat Hill knows they got to come back and run the ball next play. So he says, put everybody in the box and let's get a safety. And still the momentum. Watch his knee. This is why I think it might be a safety. Yeah, but see, here's right. the problem. His, it's, it's not his knee, it's where's the ball at. When his knee hits Correct. the ground. Correct. And on that, you know what, a closer look provided, and again, just if you don't know, that this is what the replay official is looking at also. It's got to be conclusive. Right, know? it's got to be conclusive. And 
just the knee and the football. That's what we're looking for. There was the boy. There was just nothing there. You're right. He's trying to follow Cox, which is always a good idea. Yeah. It, I, I just don't think people understand how good a coach Pat Hill is. Cornell Banks was in there to bust that play up. Well, his record is a very solid one. Coming up on his 12th year next season. Which is long in, in today's time. Oh, incredibly long. Incredible. 84 and 55. He's very passionate about the program. He had, and we touched about this at the beginning of the broadcast, in January last year, two-hour meetings with every player. Two-hour meetings right. with, with every player. Not just a five-minute, how you doing, see you next year. With If you're an offensive player, all the offensive coaches were present. And he had academic counselors available. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Third down, Georgia Tech. And they, they, they went through every single player to make their point that you need to understand what Bulldog football is all about. And even when he was just telling us the story, months, 11 months later, he got fired up, started hitting the table, and, and sort of getting excited about it. Georgia Tech, 9 of 14 on third down. They haven't had one like this all day. James Big Johnson. Catch. That's a great throw, too. Nice throw and catch. Well, the whack oriented crowd here is hoping to get a punt out of this. Good job keeping his shoulders up so he can see over the lineman on the set, throwing off his front foot. James Johnson, good job of using his hands. It's a gain of 12 after what was nearly called a safety. Instead, ends up being a Georgia Tech first down. Still need a little more room to be able to run some trick type plays because it's a little too close for, I'm sure, close to Luda. Flag is down. That pass incomplete. Booker had some room to run. Now, yeah, the flag gonna, came from the field judge. It's going to be on Damian Owens, though. Damian Owens, a little too handsy there on that, in that particular play there. Yeah. Holding number four on the defense. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. He had, a, he had done a great job of coverage, but then he decided to get a little too aggressive and then back just through the penalty. Now, Georgia Tech at one point was really down in this game. They had given up 27 unanswered points and trailed 27 to 7. And they have come nearly all the way back. Every quarterback wants to throw a deep ball. As long as defenses understand that, they can sit back and wait. Generally not going to be patient enough to keep taking the short throws. Pressure coming from the edge, and he'll throw that one away. And there is a flag down at the 15-yard line. Tyler Klutz applied the heat. But the question is, was there a receiver in the vicinity? And actually, a receiver came back. Yeah, I think the there was a receiver in the, in the area. <laughs> they may throw a flag on Pat Hill here at the get-back coach. Intentional grounding. Well, they got him. 18 on the offense. Ooh, down. Second down. I don't know. Phil Judge may have something to say about that. Phil Judge saw something different. And he's coming in. Yeah, That's he, a good he call saw there, something James. Different. The receiver came back to the ball. And by the way, the uh, Georgia Tech coaching staff giving him an earful here, and now he's run over there. The field judge. Ben Vasconcells, the Ben Vasconcells, pardon me. Now it's just a matter of he can be adamant in that discussion there. If he can just say it loud enough, look, the guy came back to the ball and let it be. Oh well, I don't know why the field judge reaction. He didn't uh, know he was real adamant. One guy gets to wear the white hat, you know. It's <laughs> the boss. He got overruled real quickly. Second down. Second down. Second down. Second down. Well, we've had back-to-back -back pretty important penalties. One led to a first down for Georgia Tech. Now one has put them in some awkward field position here. It's second and 16. Be patient. If they become impatient, they're going to turn the ball over. Just, well, you see for yourself that Demarius Thomas shouldn't have that football. You know, we went out pregame and looked at the sun issues in, in, in the stadium, and we thought there could be some problems with catching the ball or fielding the ball with the sun. And from this angle, looks like a pretty simple catch, but he's looking right into the sun. Now, 
Georgia Tech's receivers have had problems catching the ball this year. But I think in that instance there, the sun might have gotten his eyes. He had a big cushion that time, too. He had a little bit of room to turn around and gain a few extra yards. His third down. Georgia Tech sideline wants a penalty on Damian Owens. They're not going to get it. And Georgia Tech will have to punt. Good coverage that time by Damian Owens. Not panicking, not grabbing the receiver, not putting his arm out to arm bar him. Great job. Still plenty of time left in this game. Now we'll see how Clifton Smith battles that son. Against the winner of the Ray Guy Award. Every one of his punts, if he puts this inside the 20, he's, oh, he keeps it! What a play by Brooks. He knew his punt was going to be blocked. Wow. That, that is impressive. real presence. That was impressive. Trevor Shambley had gotten in and was absolutely going to block this punt. Now, question, wow. why wasn't there a penalty flag on him? Because there were illegal men downfield. You can't leave until the ball's punted. Durant Brooks showing you why he's the Ray Guy Award winner. as they battle Heisman winner Tim Tebow in Florida. New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. They came in an instant. They destroyed everything. My people. My friends. My home. All I have left is vengeance. Unreal Tournament 3, rated M for Mature. PlayStation 3, starting at $399. Introducing the Samsung Juke. Samsung, leading the music phone revolution. The bucket list. The list of all the things to do before we kick the bucket. We can do this. I hate your guts! The bucket list. Proud of you. Nobody cares what you think. Rated PG-13. Now playing in select cities everywhere January 11th. If you want to quit smoking, think mint. Commit mint lozenges. Commit tastes great, works fast, and calms cravings even after the lozenge is gone. Reese Davis with you in our college football command center. A check-in on Kentucky and Florida State. Andre Woodson hit as he throws, but Stevie Johnson there to make good for it. And the Cats on top of the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl, 14-7, but the Seminoles are on the move. Look what Oregon did in the Sun Bowl. They dropped a 28 spot on South Florida in the third quarter. They're up 46-14. Capital One Bowl Week rolls on tonight. The Chick-fil-A Bowl, Clemson and Auburn, 7:30. Eastern. All right, Reese, thank you very much. After the great play by Brooks, Fresno State still gets great field position. They go on the ground to Anthony Harden. A decent run there. Philip Wheeler bringing him down. Second team all ACC linebacker. Five and a half minutes remaining in the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. With James Hastie and Heather Cox, I'm Dave Clement. We're in Boise, Idaho, Bronco Stadium, the home of the Blue Turf and the Boise State Broncos. Who already played their bowl game. They went out to Hawaii. And that's how Fresno State wound up here. This is a season-high yardage against the Georgia Tech defense today, James. Virginia Tech gashed him in November for 481, 511 today by the Bulldogs. Surprising, very surprising to see him 
You see Georgia Tech not moving around very much. Lifton Smith. And he may have pushed that one all the way to the marker for the first down. You saw the defensive line shift in that, in that play there, but not enough movement by the linebackers in the secondary to confuse Brandstater at all today. And the other big stat, no sacks. No sacks. By Georgia Tech. 48 coming in. They led the nation. And they will, I'm not saying they'll leave the game with 48, but it's shocking that they have none. Average four sacks a game. Incredible. Well, if you give Pat Hill and his staff a month, and maybe they can come up with a way to handle it. But sometimes, you know, Pat Hill's not a very deceptive kind of guy. A lot of his football is pretty simple. If my guy blocks better than your guy, we're going to win. And he talked about, in his view, the player that turned his head. In other words, he thought it was a head-on collision, and the guy that turned his head was the team that was going to lose. Well, you know, when he talks about going out and recruiting players, uh, that have certain attributes may not be the big 6'4", 300 pound say lineman mm -hmm. whereas it's a more of an undersized guy maybe he's six foot two but he has really long arms and he thinks he could be a heck of an offensive tackle that type of attention to detail is why he's such a good coach because most people won't take that in, into consideration oh boy, Smith really quick over the hundred yard mark for the third time this season Heather Guys, you talked about the one-on-one -on -one meetings that Pat Hill had with every player following a disappointing season a year ago. The final 45 minutes of every meeting included a dissertation on the definition of Bulldog football. Pat Hill had thought that this team lost some passion, lost some effort, especially late in games. So he came up with the definition and put it on this dog tag that he handed out to every player at the end of fall camp. That definition, play tough, hard-nosed, aggressive, fundamental football and with a fanatical effort hard to read for as long as it takes to win and leave no doubt right now leaving no doubt and finishing strong certainly the most important part of the mantra of bulldog football now philip wheeler finished off that tackle on clifton smith i don't know how you got all that onto a dog tag i can understand why that might be hard to read but when we chatted with some of the fresno uh, players klutz and riley in particular i just innocently asked yeah there you go that is very small. They play hard down there at the bottom, but that's an idea. There it is. Tough, hard-nosed, aggressive, fundamental football fanatical effort as long as it takes to win and leave no doubt. And that's what both uh, Tyler Klutz and Marcus Riley recited like that, almost as if it was uh, like the military you know, coming yeah, back to a it, command. It, it was incredible how, how well they knew that. Uh, and they said it in sync. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were ready. Smith just kind of hides in those blockers and gets a big first down. Now Georgia Tech in an uncomfortable position here, under three minutes. They start thinking about using timeouts. You know who the guy that has to deal with the most pressure on that Fresno State football team is offensive line coach Derek Frazier. Because Pat Hill, a former offensive line coach, you can rest assured that he's constantly in Derek Frazier, the offensive line coach's ear. But you can see the, the end result of it because the offensive line is doing a great job against a stellar, stellar defense. And they have not so much as touched Brand Stater more than a couple times today. Well, they have 11 wins this decade over BCS schools. And they're getting closer to a 12th. Georgia Tech, by the way, has two timeouts left. That one gets only a yard. And Morgan Burnett among the tacklers there, along with Derek Morgan. Tradition continues here with the Rose Bowl game tomorrow, New Year's Day on ABC. The 13th ranked Fighting Illini make their first trip to the Rose Bowl game since 1984 as they take on the 7th ranked USC Trojans. The Rose Bowl game presented by City on ABC tomorrow, January 1 at 4.30 Eastern. More information, just log on to ESPN.com. See if Tech uses a timeout at this point, it doesn't get much. But it gets wow. much! Clifton Smith! Wow. Holy Boise, Batman! <laughs> you bet! 32 yards. There's your player of the game right there, Clifton Smith. Yeah, I mean, he he's the team MVP, and uh, now I, you know, the guy's a phenomenal player. He can do everything that you want out of a football player on offense. Well, he is over 200 total yards just on offense, not even counting his work on punk return. 17 for 148 and a couple of scores. And those are career high in rushing yardage. 
And he did not even the number one running back. Don't forget, Ryan Matthews never played. Yeah. Ryan Matthews, game. 866 yards and 14 touchdowns. It, they, he, he just now started getting into the sink of the season the way he's running the football. It's too bad he didn't get it earlier. And they're going to go for two. Look at this formation, kids. Oh, but it didn't work. I, I got to tell you, I know we're not supposed to root, but I was kind of rooting for that to succeed just to see what they were going to do with it. Now, the reason why Pat Hill did that, because most defensive guys do not know who's eligible and who's not eligible, who's eligible and who's not. So most guys are just standing back. They don't know who's supposed to cover which guy. Well, they had that blocked, too. If he catches that, it's, he can walk in there. Yeah, I don't think Wheeler might have been able to get there in time to make the hit. So Fresno State now in a great position. Georgia Tech with two timeouts left. Let's go back, though, because it looked like they were just trying to run the clock out, and then this happened. Now, there's a good deuce block where you see a lineman engage with the defensive end, then he goes up to the next level and blocks the linebacker. But then after that, Clifton Smith just comes up there and just puts a move on some a guy there and doesn't goes through untouched. I mean, you have to look at that offensive line and say, wow, I mean, these guys are playing, you know, like they're supposed to play all year long. But this is a Pat Hill well-coached oil machine today. Well, you saw them play Kansas State when they racked up 549 yards. That was their best. Look me in they my eyes. Tell me what you see. Look me in my eyes. Tell me what you see. I see greatness. <laughs> I know he's not talking to us. Uh, 568 total yards for them today. <laughs> That's the second time that's happened for well, Georgia Tech and Evans. I don't have to look him in his eyes, but, I, but I, I tell you right now, he's a great little running back. It's going to be a face mask penalty there, so Georgia Tech will get a little extra field position out of this, but Jamal Evans had a couple of, uh, well, first Dwyer dropped a kick, and then Evans has dropped a kick. Um, looks like there's a little bit of frustration now starting to come out of Georgia Tech. That's been a weird month for them. Let's think about yeah. this for a second. They lost their coach, Chan Gailey, and Chan Gailey had a great quote in the papers. You know, he had six winning seasons at Georgia Tech. They went to six bowl games. This, of course, counts as his, his bowl game, even right. though he's not around. Right. And he didn't get to keep his job. Certainly going 0-6 against Georgia had something to do with that. They have had an interim coach, popular guy in John Tenuta, defensive coordinator with a great record. He tries to get the head coaching job, doesn't get it. Here comes your new guy from Navy with a different offense and all the talk in Atlanta. Well, what's going to happen now to Georgia Tech? They're not going to run that offense in the ACC. Right. All that stuff. I mean, it's been a bizarre month for them. It's been a very bizarre month. But more so than anything, I, I think is I, I, I'm more concerned about the players mm -hmm. and how it's going to affect these players. There are two penalties on the play. Face mask on the kicking team, number 30. Dead ball, personal foul, 54. On the return team, both penalties will be enforced. It'll be first and ten. Cedric Griffin was hit with a personal foul penalty. Well, we talked about it, and we think he wrapped it up with that last touchdown run. But Clifton Smith is our player of the game, presented by Capital One. Now he has two touchdowns in this half. Here's number one. Just great vision coming through the hole, but virtually untouched. I mean, most of Clifton Smith runs big run, should I say, where, where he was virtually untouched. And so. he is the Capital One player of the game. Not bad. Not bad. Really quick. I, I think you're right. You brought up a great point for his pro future as a kick returner, almost certainly. Now, depending on what team he winds up with, will he get to carry the ball? I don't know. You'll never know that right, right away. Right. But, yeah, absolutely. NFL people will know him. Plus, Pat Hill has a very good reputation in the NFL, well, having been there as an assistant coach. If you think about it from this instance, would you rather be a running back that gets the ball and you, you can only run the ball when it's handed to you, or do you want to be recognized as a guy as an all-purpose guy that can do all things? That means you're a complete football player. I'd rather be the latter. And the interception by Jake Jordy will wrap it up for Fresno State. Well, every quarterback gets impatient, and every quarterback wants to throw the ball downfield. And if, as a defense, you understand that quarterbacks are in the stats more than they are than any player on the football field, you know that they want to throw the ball downfield and show off their arm. And eventually, they're going to have to take a shot. And if you can stay patient, and make the catch when it comes to you, you can get a lot of interceptions. 
You just have to remain patient. So Fresno State is Calvin Booker. I just wish the Giants would have remained patient in the secondary. They may not have given up. <laughs> may not have given up those big plays that Randy Moss this past week. Uh, you can. It's easier said than done with that cat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, James, as we uh, get for you and I to say goodbye to the 2007 season in the highest scoring season in the history of college football, what do you like about 2008? What should we look for? Well, we, you know, the, who cannot talk about Bob Petrino and what he's going to do at Arkansas? Will, will McFadden, Darren McFadden come back? Will Felix Jones come back? Then Tim Tebow, can he repeat? You know, we have, there's talks right now about them going back to a two-quarterback style They're system. They're going to do it. Yeah. They're going to go do it. The, now we got... Bobby Bowden, how long is he going to coach? Is Jimbo Fisher going to remain patient for two years, maybe three years? And then the last thing is the NCAA rule change, which is, are they going to allow coaches to continue to call timeouts on the sideline, or will they now get that responsibility back to the players, which I think i like to see the players now be more in control of calling timeouts and taking that responsibility out of the coaches' hands. Well, here will be two teams that will be fun to watch in 2008. Georgia Tech with a new coach and Paul Johnson, a proven winner, and certainly a proven winner for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Pat Hill has picked up this bowl win. Four and four in bowls for Pat Hill, and they are the 2007 Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl champions. And somebody got the big shower, but it wasn't the coach. Look at that. He's very, very elusive suddenly. <laughs> they want to get him, but there might be another two-hour meeting. I don't know if they want to do that either. That's a wily veteran right there. Yep, he, he escaped the drenching. <laughs> How about that? Pat Hill's best move all year. John Tenuta, that handshake will mark his last act as the Georgia Tech interim head coach, and he will go on to another job, undoubtedly. He'll be in great demand Oh yeah, with Georgia Tech. Uh, six very good years with Chan Gailey and that staff. But for Pat Hill, that's their 12th win over a BCS school this decade, the most of any of the non-BCS schools, and an impressive one today, particularly on the offensive end, where they rack up 572 yards. And with the winning coach, here's Heather Cox. And we just got that Gatorade bath you guys were talking about. Uh, a very happy Fresno State program. Coach Hill, you feel like 10? Some very happy Bulldogs, Coach. Coach, as Dave just mentioned, this is the 12th win. <laughs> BCS school, the most ever by a non-BCS program in the last decade. What does that say about this team? I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just proud of our team, and I promised I'd say hello to my mother. So hi, Mom. And Heather, this is the second time really I've gotten a game great bath with you, Coach. We told them all, we told them for a month to play head up and make their heads turn, and we made their heads turn today. Coach, you're just the third team all season to get more than 100 yards rushing against Georgia Tech. You got almost 300. Where did you see a weakness? Well, we just told our kids for a month that we needed to play this thing head on, and the first team to turn their head was going to lose, and today, we, we made them turn their heads, so I was really proud of our performance. We'll let you go celebrate, and let's go dry off. All right, all right. All right, Heather, thank you very much. Hopefully she didn't get drenched by that either. <laughs> At least she's got a warmer jacket on than the head coach. Once again, our final score, Fresno State 40 and Georgia Tech 28. James, my friend, have a happy new year. Pleasure, and I hope you to too, see you friend. down the road again in a few months. Heather Cox, thank you. Also to the boys in the truck, Jimmy and Bruce, and all the rest of the Bristol Rollers, I'm Dave Lamont saying so long from Boise, Idaho. If you like more on today's game, join us over on ESPN news for a post-game extra report and don't forget to catch more football action on espn too this has been a presentation of espn the worldwide leader in sports now let's join a sports center special the sports center year in review